their allies on the ground. Since then, the Houthis have been unable to get troops into the area for a counterattack, and the Saudis appear completely disinterested in the city. Early this year, the U.S. withdrew the ground troops from Yemen that it used as spotters for the drone war there. Despite this, the drone attacks have continued apace, and the question of who is actually being hit appears to have largely gone unasked, with the all-purpose label suspects good enough for most. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports the U.S. Department of Justice announced Wednesday it is opening a civil rights investigation into the death of Zachary Hammond, an unarmed South Carolina teenager who was shot to death by police last month while on a first date. 19-year-old Hammond was shot twice July 26 by police in Seneca, South Carolina in the parking lot of a fast food restaurant where he and his date went for ice cream. Authorities claim the teen attempted to run over Seneca police officer Lieutenant Mark Tiller. It has not been made clear however exactly why police converged on Hammond's vehicle in the first place as he was not the target of any criminal investigation or sting operation. According to the Seneca Police Department, Tiller shot Hammond through an open window because he believed the teen was operating his vehicle in a threatening manner. Local authorities have been investigating the shooting, but the FBI, U.S. Attorney for South Carolina, and Justice Department Civil Rights Division got involved on Wednesday. Hammond's family is calling on police to release dashboard camera video video from the attending patrol cars, hoping the footage will shed more light on the sequence of events. Hammond's mother, Angie, said, We just want answers. We have no clue as to what happened. Hammond's father, Paul, added, Our son deserves that, and we deserve that as a family. When her plush and comfy life suddenly and unexpectedly fell apart, Brooke and her dog Cloud set out to defy the odds. If this is a man's world, as they say, living on the streets is no place for a young woman. One day she awoke in the Redwood Forest and realized she had become a hobo and would ultimately come to know exactly what it means to survive. How to Be a Hobo by Brooke Willett is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. Reuters reports Ohio voters will decide in November whether to legalize cannabis for treating illnesses and for getting high recreationally. Secretary of State John Husted said on Wednesday he had certified the group Responsible Ohio had gathered enough valid signatures to place a constitutional amendment before voters... After briefly reviewing several documents outlining his parents' dire financial circumstances today, 23-year-old Wesleyan University graduate Zach Wallace told reporters he had, quote, absolutely no clue how his mother and father are going to dig themselves out of the $35,000 of student loan debt they incurred to pay for his college education. I mean, this is going to be really hard on my parents. When I was in college, I just assumed that, you know, they would pay off my student loans within a few years of me graduating, but I never realized how expensive college is going to be for them. Wallace, who graduated with a film studies degree in 2012 and has since had two unpaid internships, told reporters that from the way prevailing interest rates are trending, his parents could easily be paying off his debt for the next quarter century. They're going to be paying for the rest of their lives. And on top of it all, they have to help me out with my rent, too. I mean, it sucks. It really, really sucks. This is the Onion News Network. talk live well death penalty is in the news again and uh, you know this is always a hot topic on free talk live we take the position uh, i take the position on free talk live i guess we uh, all have different opinions on topics and you guys i'm not going to propose to speak for you um, on this one but um, i take the position that the death penalty is a it's a poor use of taxpayer money and that, uh, you know, you can't know everything, so you shouldn't take the ultimate step. But it looks like the Supreme Court of 
Connecticut, whether they agree with my reasoning or not, has decided essentially to agree with my conclusion. Uh, the Connecticut Supreme Court rules death penalty unconstitutional bars execution of any inmate. This is from their uh, uh, the Hartford Courant. Not sure what a Courant is besides a little berry. But, uh, That's probably, I, I think, what it's named after is the berry. Why would you name your newspaper the Hartford Little Berry? What do you think was used to make ink? Okay. Is that what, what they used it for? Probably. Makes some, okay. It's, it's a guess. Yeah. It's a guess as good as any. <laughs> it's a very it's a very educated guess. Yeah. Would, might be my. After a sweeping uh, two-year review, the state Supreme Court outlawed capital punishment in Connecticut Thursday, saying the state's death penalty no longer comports with evolved societal values and serves no valid purpose as a punishment. I hate these statements about Soci- evolved societal values. The Supreme Court sh- should be there to determine whether something is constitutional or not constitutional. Yes. Deciding whether or not something is an evolved societal value does not address constitutionality in any way, shape, or form. Um, that's you know, that's not the issue. If, if we have an evolved uh, societal value, then we should change the Constitution to fit that value, not have the group of people who interpret the Constitution decide, you know what, as a society, we've just decided we've moved beyond this, uh, this, this death penalty thing. By the way, they have not moved beyond it, apparently, in Oklahoma and Texas. So apparently they're talking or about— Or Florida or Arkansas or a bunch of other states. Connecticut culture is <laughs> what they're referring to here. So anyway, I would agree that it, it doesn't serve a valid purpose as punishment. Um, punishment— I think that we have a, a an incredible emphasis on punishment um, here in this country, and that it, um, it it doesn't serve the purpose that we're hoping for. It is uh, fiscally irresponsible. Okay, so let let's take the money aspect out of it completely, because okay. money should not determine whether or not something is moral or ethical. It shouldn't, but you're taking money from people, so therefore their opinion matters. Right, and because. So let, let's just sort of go with that before I go where I was going to. Okay. There's a theory that if you force someone to pay for something that he does not support, that that is tyranny. Yeah, that sounds about right. And there are some people that don't support killing people. So to take their money and then kill people using that money is tyrannical. That's why I say money should not be looked at whether or not something is moral or ethical. Okay, well, for me, one of the first things I'm going to look at is the— Forcing people to contribute is immoral. Okay, I want to, since, we, uh, since you addressed the money issue, I'm going to address my point on it, which is that because it, there are so many mandatory uh, appeals— and look, I know if you're sitting out there and you support the death penalty, you don't support the mandatory appeals. You want the death penalty where they have a trial, you take them out, you shoot them uh, like a horse thief. I get that that's what you want. Right, and they don't you care. You live in a fantasy world, and you're never going to get that. The last time that crap happened was 1919 or something, and it's never coming back. You don't get fantasies in this world. We need to deal with reality, and the reality is that in today's judicial system, the um, people, who, people who are sentenced to the death penalty get a bunch of mandatory appeals. You can circumvent that mandatory appeal process by sentencing somebody to life in prison. And they will be just as dangerous to society, uh, dead, or in prison. Well, Mark, we should take them there, pedophiles, and hang them high. Okay, well, um, we, they should be drawn and quartered. Bring back the drawing and quartering. The, the pedophiles um, at this point are not killed in the United States. They are put in prison, and they don't rape children there. So and fact, sometimes, just the opposite. <laughs> sometimes they're put in prison for less time than somebody that had a small amount of cannabis. Every once that, in a while, that there was a guy in o- or uh, not Oklahoma in Missouri that he was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole for a small amount of cannabis was recently commuted by the Missouri governor. Yep. So that just goes to show sort of the um, inequity of sentencing. Right. Um, There was a recent study out of Texas, out of Texas County, where they uh, looked at um, people that are sentenced to longer sentences are more likely to commit crimes when they get out. And I don't know what that is or why that is, but that's the case, is that more harsh sentences result in more crime 
um, according to this study. I'm sure that there's a study that looks at the other side and says longer sentences result in less crime. I don't know the answer to that. I can only speak to my experience in the criminal justice system. So you were saying if you remove money from the issue uh, from from the issue that there's a moral aspect. So go ahead. Right. So one of the tenets of common law, and that's supposedly what our so-called justice system is based on, is common law. There's a philosophy that says, um, well, one punishment should fit the crime, and arguably, you know, like, you kill somebody, so we should kill you. You know, like, it could be argued that that fits the crime. Yep. But then there's also uh, justice delayed is justice denied. Okay. So if you steal my car or you steal my sandwich and I wait 30 years to get retribution from you, then it could not in any meaningful sense be construed that I am seeking justice 30 years later for a missing sandwich. You may very I think that somebody should very well uh, perhaps make it up to you. Oh, really? That sandwich that's still bothering you? Here's 20 bucks, right? Like, that'd be a really great way to handle that situation. Right. Um, So in a lot of cases, and we've seen recently within the past year, at least seven people that were on death row for over 30 years wind up getting commuted and said, oh, well, we now have evidence that shows that you weren't actually at the scene of the crime. In one case, three men were sentenced to death in South Carolina. They had been in death row for 39 years. The lone witness wound up recanting and said, yeah, I wasn't there. I didn't see anything. It's crazy. And that witness will not be spending any time in prison, nor will the prosecutors or judges right. or jurors in those uh, situations. And, and then there was also somebody that wound up being uh, posthumously exonerated 94 years after they were executed. 94 years so the death after penalty. they were executed. Yeah, the death penalty. Well, I mean, you know that people, modern people have been executed that didn't do the crime, too. Yes. And the reason is, is that oftentimes we rely on witness testimony or something like that. And you never exactly, eyewitness testimony is demonstrably, uh, you know, flawed. They, yes. People don't know what they see. I, I saw a YouTube video that sort of uh, points out how horrible eyewitness can be. Where they just show a still image, and the voiceover guy says, like, look at this image, pay attention to this image. Uh, And then at the end, he asks a question about what color is this guy's jacket. Well, they slowly changed the hue of the color Uh from the beginning of the video to the end. So it started off red, it ended up purple. Okay. But because it was such a gradual change over this video, you didn't notice that the jacket was changing colors until the very end. And then it showed the two pictures and it says, this is what we started with. Still think you would be a reliable witness? <laughs> yeah. I, this, is, th- this is one issue that's very important is, is that unless you have sort of like video that this person did this, then you don't know whether you're killing the right person for the right crime. It happens all the time. Right. And if you advocate for the death penalty and you know this, then you're advocating for the killing of an innocent person. Therefore, you're guilty of the crime that you want somebody punished for. You're a murderer if you advocate for the death penalty, at least in your own mind. And I'll wind up telling you why I think that the death penalty is cruel and unusual punishment. 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE here on Free Talk Live. 855-450-3733. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now, don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. 
Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. Do you have difficulty taking supplements? Are you searching for a high-quality, complete nutritional drink that your whole family will love? Nutramedical's Life Support has arrived. All of your daily nutritional requirements in one quick, delicious drink. Dr. Bill Deagle's Life Support is a proprietary blend of vegan protein, activated vitamins, essential minerals, amino acids, probiotics, green tea, digestive enzymes, anti-inflammatories, cancer prevention, detoxification, and much more. Your body will high-five you for this one. Life Support is the best complete nutrition meal replacement on the market. Whether you are an elite athlete, have post-operative challenges, chronic illness, elderly, or a family that just wants a quick, delicious drink, try Dr. Bill Deagle's Life Support for optimized nutrition in one great-tasting smoothie. Just add cold water, almond milk, fruit, or anything else you like. Nutramedical's Life Support. Try our great-tasting chocolate or vanilla today. Call 888-212-8871 or visit us online at Nutramedical.com. Nutramedical.com for the whole family. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. You might want to comment on our current discussion regarding the death penalty, whether you're pro or against. It's up to you. 855 450 free, but it is free talk live, and you can call in about whatever you'd like. It is Mark with you, Daryl, and Johnson. Ian is this is night, night off. We're trying to make his night off permanently um, Thursday, but you know, I mean, you know, we'll, we'll be flexible. You can be flexible too. 855 450 free. Let's go straight to the phones after I tell you about Pro XPN. You need to protect yourself online. Your internet service provider is likely saving your surfing history. Criminals are sniffing your Wi-Fi packets. Governments and corporations are limiting what you see on the internet. And, of course, the NSA is sweeping up your metadata. ProXPN can solve all of that. You go to ProXPN.com slash FTL, and you'll get 50% off of the regular monthly price for the lifetime of the account when you buy um, an annual account with our coupon code FTL. That's like 5 bucks a month. With your premium account, you'll get unlimited bandwidth, servers all around the world that you can access, the ability to privately torrent. You can get past regionally blacked, blocked websites, and you get all of that with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. ProXPN.com slash FTL, promo code FTL50 for a great discount on privacy that is 
priceless. Glenn calling in from Philly. Glenn, what's on your mind? You're on Free Talk Live. Good evening, gentlemen. I do want to comment on your current discussion, but Go not right the current topic, but, but rather the word current. As a, as a duly self-appointed uh, search engine scholar, uh -huh. um, there are three spellings of the word current, as in current discussions, U-R-R-E-N-T, okay. or the bury or raise in the currents, U-R-R-A-N-T, which has nothing to do with ink or anything like that. And the word current, C-O-U-R-A-N-T, which is used in the name of the Hartford Current, borrowed from the French, meaning running. Running? So, um, you know, running, yes. Yeah. So it's, you know, it gives the idea of something running through the society, I suppose, disseminating I see. information. It's also a piece of music played in triple time. But those are our, your three denotations for current. I mean, two Thanks kinds so of much. Current yeah, you're welcome. Have a good evening. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. 855 450 free. There you go. Smartest listeners in the world, I'm telling you. And that's another thing about uh, Free Talk Live is, is you can usually pop on, make your point, and go. Lane, calling in from North Carolina. Lane, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Well, I'm, I'm against the death penalty. Uh, it just, there are just too many innocent people railroaded, and you can't bring them back from death. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just, you know, and what really gets me is you've got the conservative movement, you know, anti-abortion, talking murder, 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 but, boy, they're so quick to hang somebody you know, all of them want to bring back their, you know, death penalties and, and, and quick to justice. You know, let's let's go ahead and get justice served and, and justice done. It's just such a hypocritical thought process. I just I just can't understand it. Yeah, I, I think that, uh, you know, speaking as uh, somebody who probably who uh, who used to believe in the death penalty, I would say that what I would my response to that would be is, is look, the uh, the you know, anti abortion folks, that's a uh, the life of an innocent child as opposed to a uh, the death penalties enacted against, uh, you know, somebody who the theory is that did what they did. I think that what we need to accept for ourselves is that there's no way to know um, like. Yeah, somebody got a quote unquote fair trial, but that does not mean they did what um, they are accused of doing. It means that we found them guilty of what they're accused of doing. Correct, and yeah. and it's just it's it's you know and and I have to you know I'm going to be candid. I mean, I don't remember when I was in my mother's womb. I mean, if I had been taken, I don't think I would have known the, the difference. It would I mean, seem I unlikely really that someone would. Uh, you know, I just. It, I just, it just bothers me, the hypocrisy. I, I mean, I could not honestly, with a clear conscience, ever sit on a jury where the death penalty was involved. You know, that's an I, interesting I, point, I, too, I, because um, the death penalty that was uh, enacted on the Boston bomber, uh, Starnev, Nyayev, whatever the heck his name was, um, he, he, you know, they excluded anybody who had a moral objection to the death penalty, which therefore means that it's not a jury of his peers any longer. Um, you know, the, the definition of a jury of the peers means it's just sort of supposed to be some kind of random sample of random. Right. Yeah. Well, that, that's the modern interpretation. The original meaning of jury of your peers was let's find people that know you, that know your character. And if you can convince them beyond a reasonable doubt that this person did the thing, then we know that they are guilty. Now, the jury of your peers is people that have never heard your name and have no clue what anything is related to what you did. Interesting. Lane, I appreciate the call. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 855-450-FREE. It's 855-450-3733. You can call in and uh, talk about whatever you want. Let's go to Dana calling in from Maine. Dana, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi. Um, I have a quick question for you guys. Have any of you tried the alcohol drink absinthe? Have I tried absinthe? Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I saw a bottle of it once. I don't think I have. Of course, he calls in on the night. Ian's not on. Yeah. <laughs> I've never tried it. I've never tried it either. Yeah, I'm also very curious on if Ian has ever tried it, too. I know he has. Uh, oh, yeah, really? Yeah. Uh, what's his opinion on it? Any ideas? I think he liked it, but... Uh, I don't know that he's like a major drinker of it, but uh, I, no, I would suggest calling either tomorrow or Saturday when Ian will be on the show, and you can ask Ian personally what he thinks. Have you of looked it absinthe. up online? Huh? Have you looked up uh, information on it online? 
Uh, yes, yeah, some information dealing with Epson. I can tell you there's a fantastically amusing video that came out recently uh, done by, I believe, BuzzFeed. Um, the title of the video is Americans Try Absinthe. And, um, yeah, I, I saw that. That was pretty cool. <laughs> oh, you saw that video. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's amusing. It's yeah, my understanding that it's, it's basically just a marketing ploy to uh, get steampunk type people to drink uh, liquor. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. It doesn't do anything different than liquor. Uh, according to the video that I watched, the people who were who were regular drinkers and tried absinthe, it seemed like it was uh, they felt their th because these were all people who were are American people who drank alcohol on a regular basis who had never had absinthe tried absinthe and said, you know, this just feels like it moved quicker. They said it was like it's like a, a whole night's worth of drinking in like a couple hours or whatnot. So they they felt like it was like they got drunk quicker and that the 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 uh, the buzz passed through them quicker as well. Sounds like hooey to me. Yeah, I was mostly interested on the uh, you guys intake, mostly Ian. I guess I called on the wrong night. My bad. About uh, his thoughts on dealing with the long ban that they had in the oh. U.S. from 1912 to 2007, and yeah. the current regulations dealing with it right now. I think that's why it uh, has the, uh, the the mystique that it does, um, because it was uh, you know had this this ban that was in place. I'd have to see some kind of chemical difference um, in that and ethyl alcohol. Yeah, thujone. <laughs> What's that? The wormwood. Yeah. Yeah. It's Supposedly. clearly a chemical difference. Well, if there's if there really is wormwood in there, but what kind of proof do you have that it's really in there? What yeah. kind of proof do you have that there's agave in your in your tequila? I mean, this is marketing. Okay. <laughs> it's artificial agave flavor. It's artificial wormwood flavor. I don't know. Tequila's disgusting and tastes like paint thinner, so I don't care. Well, I'm sure absinthe <laughs> is just delightful. Just you just want to sit around and have a cold glass of absinthe <laughs> to quench your thirst. Thank you so much, Dana. Appreciate the call. Yeah, thank you. 855-450-3733. The death penalty. Absinthe. 855-450. Free. Free talk live. Are you suggesting people die by absinthe? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Hey, Berkey Guy here. Are you still drinking unfiltered tap water? Does your water contain chlorine or fluoride? Will you have drinkable water in an emergency? The Berkey Guy is here to help you remove these and other potential contaminants from your water, thus helping you drink clean, purified water. We offer Berkey water purification systems at the lowest available prices online. Don't go another moment without Berkey System. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands drink clean, purified water. Join them by visiting GoBerkey.com or call me, the Berkey Guy, at 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. Before using heart and body extract, my energy level was very, very low. I could only walk a few feet and then would have to sit down. I was tired and lethargic. But after taking heart and body extract, my energy level has improved greatly, and I can now walk longer distances without getting tired so fast. Thank you, heart and body extract. Learn the secrets of an effective, natural, 100% organic nutritional supplement for a healthy heart and circulation at hbextract.com. Does this ever happen to you? Moments after you're introduced to someone, you forget his or her name. It's a common faux pas you'll want to avoid, especially if you're a job seeker. And even if you're not, here's a tip. As you are being introduced, and while you're still shaking hands, smiling, and making eye contact, say the person's name aloud. Not only does that make a deposit in your memory bank, it acknowledges the other person. And that is more than a nuance, as is maintaining eye contact. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. Cutting through the clutter rather than blending into the blah, blah, blah will help you connect better no matter what the conversation. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his Porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com.
LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. There's only one place you could have sex without everybody else knowing about it. <laughs> That's in the bathroom. It Unless was... you want to go back into the crew quarters, which might give you bonus points. The Mile High Club awards you, I suppose, based on the amount of times that you've entered into the club. Not only do you want to be in the club, you want to be the top dog. Yeah, right? you, you got to be sure. a premier yeah. member. So I would think there'd have to be points for location on the plane who you encountered with. Were you there with your girlfriend? Did you take her into the bathroom? Did you manage to get a stewardess into the bathroom with you? Did you manage to get uh, the girl that you just happened to be sitting next to on the plane? I mean, so all of these things could be worth... (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) To be a part of the Mile High Club, what's the criteria? You have to... Copulate in the air. Yeah. What defines copulation? Who has to have an orgasm? Does there have to be an orgasm? Or do you just have to stick it in and pull it out? Is it just penetration? We're out of here. (laughs) Mile High Club, get my card. Yeah. (laughs) Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Listen to lrn.fm on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. You can call in and talk about whatever you want to talk about on this episode of Free Talk Live. Bitcoinist.net is the ultimate resource for Bitcoin industry news, reviews, education, the latest in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. Bitcoinist is the prime online destination for information about Bitcoin and digital currency, the di- digital currency industry. Their website integrates a community forum, breaking Bitcoin and digital currency news. They also aim to cover fintech and blockchain tech news as well. Bitcoinist has a very sophisticated Bitcoin network statistic model, a uh, solid beginner's guide to Bitcoin, and much more. Bitcoinist's platform serves the needs of everyone. Looking to keep up with Bitcoin and digital currencies from beginners to experts. Bitcoinist.net. I'm on their uh, daily newsletter feed and I find it useful. Bitcoinist.net. Let's go to Mark calling in from St. George, Utah. Mark, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? I was actually just going to respond to the other caller's question about absence. Go right ahead. Um, And you are you're completely right from what i hear is it's i've tried it a few times and uh, including in the bahamas and in europe and you know in case it's some other uh formula and really all it is is it's just really high proof liquor that so that's why it gets you drunker quicker it doesn't have any psychoactive effects that i ever felt and uh, although liquor does have psychoactive like effects licorice. what's that liquor oh, has well, of course, mild of course. psycho i guess what i meant is yes you're not going to see things one. that aren't there, is what you're saying? Yeah. There's no green fairy or anything like they say in the marketing ploy. And uh, it tastes like black licorice, which isn't my favorite flavor, so it's kind of a weird drink anyway, in my opinion. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's appropriate to wear when you've got your steampunk outfit on, and then you can really impress whomever it is you're trying to impress with that. Um, but I, I, everything I've read, it's like, Eh, you know it's expensive, <laughs> you know, and uh, it's got a it's got a great allure around it, but not much different than liquor. So, what's the proof on it? Do you know? I think it is. It ranges somewhere between uh, about fifty five percent and eighty five percent alcohol. Oh, so, that is. Uh, uh, I guess it's yeah, one hundred ten to one hundred seventy proof usually. Yeah, my goodness. And it's you usually mix it down with water and sugar is how they kind of. I see. Wikipedia says that it's between 45 to 90 percent uh, percent alcohol. Yeah, I don't know why in the world. Or, uh, between 45 to 74, the 90 is the proof. So minimum would be 90 to 148 proof. 
Yeah, uh, just for reference, uh, vodka is 80 proof. Um, they do have hot, more highly distilled vodkas, but basically if you're drinking v- vodka, you're drinking 80 proof uh, liquor. Um, the I, I want, Why do they come up with these proof things that just sort of make it beyond percentage? Percentage is much more I don't know. sort of universal. Why would you ha- make um, proof just double the percent? It's crazy. Makes no sense. But it's not really double. Like it, it's it is some double. sort of no. It's double. Wrong. Double. No. I, I. All right. You can look it up, and we can talk about it next segment. But I'm not going to have you reading uh, articles on the. Air oh yeah, it, it is double. All okay. Right, I, I was off on my math. Thanks for the call, Mark. Appreciate it. I guess he's gone. Eight fifty five four fifty three. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Yeah, I'm not impressed with this whole absinthe thing, but, you know, I'm sure somebody is. We were talking about the death penalty previously, and I've got the story here from the Hartford Current, apparently, about uh, the their Supreme Court overturning the death penalty, outlawing it, calling it unconstitutional, and that brings these to the 4-3 decision. This is another thing I hate about the Supreme Court. All right, so when you look at the United States Supreme Court. Yes. Who makes the laws? Well, the Supreme Court doesn't make the law. The legislature is supposed to make the laws. They're supposed to be enforced by the executive branch, and then the judicial branch determines whether or not the law is constitutional. Ultimately, the person who can say that that law isn't a law is the one who makes the laws because you can look at the vast array of laws, you can remove the ones you don't like, and then keep the ones you do. Thus, you're the lawmaking body. So yes. the Supreme Court um, is is a – it doesn't even require a supermajority or anything like that. Right. If the nine greatest judicial minds in the country can't come to some kind of agreement – it shouldn't be ruled unconstitutional. This whole 5-4, in this case, 4-3 decision crap, it's ridiculous. They should be able to get every judge to say something is constitutional or unconstitutional, or they shouldn't be able to make a ruling. That's how it is, in, especially in criminal cases. Um, that's how it yeah. is with uh, in criminal juries. A juror, the juries. I mean, the ju- the jury can come to unanimous conclusion somebody is guilty. The judges just then have to... Um, you know, rule five, four or whatever. Basically ratify the decision. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So sort of speaking about the, you know, legislature supposedly making the laws, you know, and I'm sure some of the people listening know that I go to the state house on a somewhat regular basis. And disturbingly regular. Yes. When they're in session, probably at least once, if not twice a week, And I I forget what bill the election law committee was hearing, but I told the people, if you pass this, I will challenge it in court and it will get thrown out. And their response was, so? Like, we're deciding whether or not we should pass this, not whether or not some court's going to throw it out. (laughs) Um, It's funny that uh, legislators who swear an oath to the Constitution don't care if something is going to be ruled unconstitutional. Yes, yeah. Nonetheless, that's I guess it's not surprising. But the problem I have is is that you have nine unaccountable because once they're appointed, there's no accountability. Nine unaccountable. These are basically government bureaucrats. The yes. pre- the president appoints them. Yes. And they are not elected. They have the, you, if you work for the government, you're one of two things. You're a bureaucrat because you work for a bureau or you're a politician because you get elected. Yes. So there are nine unappointed, uh, unaccountable, appointed government bureaucrats make decisions as to what the laws are in this country. And that is a disturbing thing. I, I, I just sort of want to nitpick on something. They're not entirely unaccountable. The Congress could wind up saying this person needs to be uh, impeached because fill in the blank reason. Uh huh. So there is a process for removing one of these a-holes in a moo-moo. Has it ever happened? Not in the last 170 years or so, but it has happened. Has that- so it, it's theoretically possible right. Right. that one of them can be held accountable for something. But yet the you president— You know as well as I do, unless they're caught with a, uh, a 14-year-old hooker, they are not going to get it, uh, impeached. 
Right. And the president can just decide how many people are going to be on the Supreme Court. That's true. Because that that's something that's that FDR, FDR, FDR threatened to do. He threatened to bump it up to 13 members from nine. And then all of a sudden, the Supreme Court decided, oh, yes, all of these horrible things that we said six months ago were unconstitutional. Now, all of a sudden, they're okay. That's another thing that needs to be set in stone. The idea that the Supreme Court doesn't have a, a firm number um, does give the, the president too much power. And that, 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 you know, like what FDR did, there's so many things that FDR did um, should have been in, incarceratable offenses. But no, no, we're not going to do that. So what would you say is the best thing that FDR ever did as president? I guess I'm not a fan. Um, you, you know I come from the right. Even though I'm a libertarian, I don't believe that the state should have monopoly privilege over the use of violence in a given geographic area. I still am conservative and have come from the right, and uh, you know I'm a I'm an elected Republican. So you know, if right? I, I'm a just big saying, like, man. if push came to shove and you had to say something nice about the guy. What would the nice thing about him as president be? It's nice that we have a president that was in a wheelchair. We can say at least handicapped people can uh, can hold the office. I, I would say the nice thing about him is he eventually died and was no longer president. You left Eleanor in charge, though. 855-450-3733. It's 855-450 free. Free Talk Live. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. Paid non attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas, is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention, Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24 7. Call 800 261 0937. That's 800 261 0937. Serious investors and traders want to make an 81% return in 60 seconds. We can show you how using our free tool. Use the same secret algorithm professional hedge fund managers use to make billions of dollars in profits. Turn $250 into $4,903 in just seven clicks of a mouse. Our tool is so simple, my 82-year-old grandmother can use it to make insane stock market profits. Best part, it's 100% free. Go to richmoneyrich.com. Watch the free video before the hedge funds make us take it down. richmoneyrich.com. That's richmoneyrich.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Book, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. 855-450-3733. It's Mark with you. Daryl. And Johnson. 855-450-3733. So we were uh, checking it out during the break here, and we got breaking news on alcohol proof. Apparently in the United States, I'm right, it's 200 proof is 100% mm-hmm. alcohol. However, <laughs> in the UK, it is seven-fourths. So it's 1.75. So almost double, but not quite. And that can make things very interesting uh, when, you know, suppose you were in a place like, I don't know. Canada. Canada. That, that. Might be close to the United States and still use maybe British measurements. Right, because the Queen. Yeah, whatever. So what do they use in Canada? Uh, according to Wikipedia, they use both. Oh, that, that's got to be useful information. They like- officially follow U.S. usage for labeling for alcohol by volume percentage, but the old U.K. proof standard is used casually. Overproof rum means... Anything that is greater than 100 degree UK proof, which would be over 57% ABV. Yeah, so like uh, almost 120 proof. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, obviously the thing that makes the most sense is alcohol by volume, just the percentage um, there that makes more sense than anything yes. else. But these, uh, you know, people are used to using proof. This is the problem. This is why we can't get on the metric system in the United States. The reason that uh, I... Well, I can't remember what was uh, something that I was reading recently that it was in um, just in uh, kilograms. I I really don't know. I think it's um, two point two. If you want to learn kilograms and like metric weights and measures, talk to a drug dealer. They can break it down for you, teach you how to use the metric, how many ounces are in this, and how many grams in stuff, and they they, they can teach you. I see. So I wonder how much, how often you actually encounter 200 proof alcohol, though. I mean, it seems like maybe You'd the UK have to make that in a lab. Yeah, I mean, it <laughs> seems like maybe the UK uh, standard is cor- more, maybe more correct for sort of actually judging how much alcohol is in something. Because when you think about it, if to them, if you say, "Oh, I've got 200 proof alcohol," I mean, they'd have to ask, like, "What is that? 114 <laughs> percent?" <laughs> they'd have to ask that. <laughs> yes. I'm sure that somebody has somewhere um, 200 proof alcohol. It probably isn't very tasty, but um, you know. I, I think they call that jet fuel. It probably tastes like tequila. <laughs> <laughs> well, then it can't melt steel beams, can it? It can if the plane has the chemtrail chemicals. <laughs> Boom! Conspiracy in a conspiracy. <laughs> Checkmate. I win. Going back, I don't to- know why nobody in that, those conspiracies ever asks if anything else that is located in an office building could possibly burn steel, like you know, chairs, desks, cabling, <laughs> you know, like the Carpet. the actual insulation on cabling, which is made of fuel, you know, a particular type of plastic, you yeah. know, petroleum product. Yeah, that's distilled from fuel. Anyway, um, uh, the death penalty here. If uh, if you want to comment on it, the number is eight five five four five zero three seven three three. The Connecticut Supreme Court has ruled 
in their state uh, that the death penalty is now unconstitutional, making yet one more state. And I believe that's the majority of states um, that uh, doesn't have the death penalty. Also, the vast majority of sort of uh, the industrialized world, the, uh, the, the modern world, I don't even know what uh, terminology to use, sort of Western world, doesn't have the death penalty. And the United States, and actually just some of the states in the United States are just hangers on, many of them southern states, where I am from. And I don't, I'm not a self-hating Southerner. I love many things about the South, but uh, the whole crime and punishment thing, it, it's, it's, uh, it, it needs to be fleshed out. And yeah. it seems like people have an opinion without having much uh, to back it. Right. And a lot of times people will just throw out these sort of things like, well, the death penalty deters crime and it deters murder. But if you look at the statistics of murder rates in states with and states without the death penalty, there's actually slightly higher murder rates in states with the death penalty. Here's a philosophical question for both of you. So, like, let's say that there's a prisoner who gets a life sentence, you know, or multiple consecutive life sentences, and that prisoner says, no, I just let me hang myself. You know, like, just let me kill myself. You know, I'll hang myself. All I need is a bed sheet. You know, like it Here's doesn't have to be exp- doesn't have to be expensive. Here you go. Here's a bed sheet. Okay, they will give so you a you, bed sheet every day. Yeah. So well, that's not no, that's absolutely false. If if they know someone is going to try and kill themselves, they go to extensive lengths to prevent that from happening. If they yes, know they it, do. Yes. Right. So I, I guess what I'm saying though is like you know what, he, what he's saying in this hypothetical. And correct me if I'm uh, you know jumping to a conclusion here, but you did say in your scenario the inmate. Tells a guard yes. or a judge or somebody, I'm going to kill myself if I'm in jail for the rest of my life. Right. If somebody on the death row says that. Well, there's no death row in this scenario. Okay. But if there is a death row, currently there are death rows. Mm-hmm. And on those death rows, if an inmate claims they're going to kill themselves, they'll go on suicide watch and be prevented from killing themselves. Yes. yes. That's actually, how insane this is. There's actually, <laughs> yes. There's actually a great... Uh, 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 comic from Cyanide and Happiness is one of my favorite web comics. Oh, that's I out love there. that one, and where, I know the one you're talking <laughs> yeah, about. Yeah, where this guy's on death row, and uh, they're like, you know, uh, do you have any last requests? You know, what's your last meal? And the guy's like, I'd like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And the guy's like, okay. And uh, you know, then the the guard says, I can't wait to pull the uh, switch on you, or like, I'm I'm looking forward to executing you, boy. And uh, the prisoner's like, not likely. And then the guard's like, huh? And he's like, peanut allergy, bitches. Out. <laughs> and he just dies. Yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> so yeah, they they go to a lot of uh, lengths to try and prevent <laughs> these inmates from killing themselves. They that's want because to do they're it. human commodities. They are uh, bodies that go on racks on shelves, and uh, they're counted and and that uh, that space that rental space is paid mm-hmm. by the taxpayer. Right. It's and really it's, important. There's a budget them. that has to be maintained. So um so. Yeah. Mark, going back to the number of states, according to the Death Penalty Information Center, there are only 19 states that have abolished the death penalty. Is that so? So it's a majority of states that still have the death penalty. Yes. Michigan was the first to abolish in 1846. Now, I would like to point out that there are states like New Hampshire that have effectively abolished the death penalty. So New Hampshire uh, has the death penalty on the books. However, I don't believe anybody's been killed here since 1938. Which, Sounds right. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, yes, I guess you're right. Thank you so much for uh, for the for the facts there. But it's, you know, right here, it's going to be abolished in New Hampshire relatively soon, too, because I can tell you that the death penalty advocate, uh, death penalty, um, uh, you know, people that are they're trying to do away with it are very active. Do you think it'll be uh, abolished before the centennial anniversary of of the last time someone was killed. I don't know. Probably. Probably, just a guess. Yeah. The yeah, last time, and this was last year, so 2014, not 2015, when the bill went through the House, it passed the House, like overwhelming, like 85% or something, went to the Senate, and they had four votes on this bill, and all of them were 12-12 ties. Mm. They had a vote to pass the bill, tied. They had a vote to kill the bill, tied. Had a vote to reconsider, tied. Had a vote to table the bill, tied. So they could not do anything with this bill because they didn't, could not, not get tabled. a majority to do anything, not even put it on the table so we can maybe consider it later. See, I, uh, you know, as a very libertarian-minded person, would never make a good uh, person to put in any sort of official 
high level office in government because I'd like to try and instate a, a an experiment for especially since New Hampshire still has the death penalty to instate a libertarian death penalty and that is where the a death penalty is that someone has to uh, die by THC they have to die by marijuana so they just have to keep smoking. <laughs> Right, <laughs> it'll never happen, but this, they'll just keep hold on, trying. Hold on. At, at some point, I, I could, <laughs> I could make this happen. You put them in a room that has no ventilation. Well, yeah, and then be... they ultimately die of carbon monoxide <laughs> yeah. poisoning. That's not the same. No, no, no. They're See, very, that's very not very high. That would be incorrect. They would be very high, and then they would just fall asleep. <laughs> and because the high amounts of carbon monoxide, they would wind up dying. That's essentially a gas chamber. This is one of uh, those. But they would be high. This is one of those rhetorical questions <laughs> that pe- people can't move on. Um, even though there's been nobody executed in New Hampshire. Um, since 1938 and unlikely to be executed for a very long time. And this is happening in some other in other states too. Um, it's Texas and Oklahoma and Florida. These are the ones Arkansas, these are the ones that are doing the executing out there. Yes. Um, you know, if you if you took the top 10 states, you have the vast majority of elections. Uh, or excuse me, uh, ex- uh, executions. E- electrocutions. Um, and in, in some of these states, like New Hampshire, this is they're just not going to do away with it because the Republicans are like, I I'd lose votes over this. And they're not going to lose votes over it because nothing's happening. There's effectively no uh, death penalty in this state, and just like 19 other states, that there is no death penalty in. So according to the Death Penalty Information Center, there have been four executions in the Northeast since 1976. Your thoughts on the death penalty, if that's what you wish to do, the number is 855-450-3733. You should write it down and keep it for later. 855 450 free. And our username is lrn.fm on Skype. 855 450 free. Free Talk Live. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. Kid, let me paint you a picture. Tuesday night, your cog belt goes bust. Who will help you get what you need fast without the hoops, hurdles, or headaches? Granger, that's who. I love Granger. They got a wide variety of products and solutions. Granger makes it easy to get everything we need and answers for when we're not sure what the answer is. Now, kid, let me paint you another picture. It looks like a mop, a basement bathroom, and you all over it. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross has been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Now, an appeal is Ross's only chance, and he needs your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, August 13th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.42 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,123 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $268. 
Antiwar.com reports U.S. drones have killed at least five people Wednesday, attacking a vehicle in the southeast Yemeni port city of Mukalla. The city is held by al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, and officials labeled the slain as suspected al-Qaeda militants. As usual, there was no evidence that the slain in Mukalla were actually al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula fighters. The U.S. launches signature strikes on anyone who looks like they might conceivably be in al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, and in a town run by al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, the bar for that is set pretty low, with regular strikes on anonymous targets. Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula seized Mukalla early in the Saudi war in Yemen, taking advantage of the transition of Houthi forces to resist Saudi strikes and offensives by their allies on the ground. Since then, the Houthis have been unable to get troops into the area for a counterattack, and the Saudis appear completely disinterested in the city. Early this year, the U.S. withdrew the ground troops from Yemen that used as spotters for the drone war there. Despite this, the drone attacks have continued apace, and the question of who is actually being hit appears to have largely gone unasked, with the all-purpose label suspects good enough for most. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports the U.S. Department of Justice announced Wednesday it is opening a civil rights investigation into the death of Zachary Hammond, an unarmed South Carolina teenager who was shot to death by police last month while on a first date. 19-year-old Hammond was shot twice July 26 by police in Seneca, South Carolina, in the parking lot of a fast food restaurant where he and his date went for ice cream. Authorities claim the teen attempted to run over Seneca police officer Lieutenant Mark Tiller. It has not been made clear however exactly why police converged on Hammond's vehicle in the first place as he was not the target of any criminal investigation or sting operation. According to the Seneca Police Department, Tiller shot Hammond through an open window because he believed the teen was operating his vehicle in a threatening manner. Local authorities have been investigating the shooting, but the FBI, U.S. Attorney for South Carolina, and Justice Department Civil Rights Division got involved on Wednesday. Hammond's family is calling on police to release dashboard camera video video from the attending patrol cars, hoping the footage will shed more light on the sequence of events. Hammond's mother, Angie, said, We just want answers. We have no clue as to what happened. Hammond's father, Paul, added, Our son deserves that, and we deserve that as a family. When her plush and comfy life suddenly and unexpectedly fell apart, Brooke and her dog Cloud set out to defy the odds. If this is a man's world, as they say, living on the streets is no place for a young woman. One day she awoke in the Redwood Forest and realized she had become a hobo and would ultimately come to know exactly what it means to survive. How to Be a Hobo by Brooke Willett is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. Reuters reports Ohio voters will decide in November whether to legalize cannabis for treating illnesses and for getting high recreationally. Secretary of State John Husted said on Wednesday he had certified the group Responsible Ohio had gathered enough valid signatures to place a constitutional amendment before voters in November. The proposed amendment's language still needs approval by the Ohio Ballot Board. The measure would establish a marijuana control commission charged with regulating the growth, sell, and taxation of cannabis, similar to legalization plans approved by voters in four other U.S. states. In November of last year, Oregon and Alaska approved the use of cannabis for recreational purposes in state-regulated systems that will usher in retail cannabis shops similar to those already operating in Washington State and Colorado. Voters in the District of Columbia also voted to allow recreational use of cannabis, but not retail shops. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
A cool guy from middle school is still sporting his fat pair of jinkos. A stunned St. Peter's Square crowd hears the Pope getting bitched out by God. And an eighth grader caked in makeup is probably really confident. This is The Onion Week in Review. This week, a Pew Research Center poll found that the vast majority of Americans would watch a television show called Love Trap, with most saying that regardless of the show's genre or quality, they would tune in weekly to see its stars stumble into romantic triangles, double-cross one another, and contend with whatever the titular Love Trap refers to. The survey confirmed that 62% of Americans would likely watch Love Trap to see a shrewd but cold-hearted Southern Belle named Tammy. 23% of the nation hoped the show would be referred to as The Trap by its most loyal fans. And 15% of respondents said they simply needed something to watch. And in this week's science news, a biologist completes a five-minute study of the pathetic organism in his mirror. In other news, a man confidently hits send on the worst job application a company has ever seen. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. You know, we were talking about the death penalty in the last hour, and another thing that uh, sort of related, I guess, um, you know, has to do with prison is apparently Chelsea Manning, who used to be Bradley Manning, uh, Private Manning, uh, who used to be Sergeant Manning. This is, it's very difficult to decide what Manning's first name is. (laughs) It isn't Sergeant, it isn't Private, it isn't Bradley, it isn't Chelsea. Well, she says it's Chelsea, so Chelsea is fine by me, but it can be confusing nonetheless. There's no doubt about it. Apparently, Manning had some issues uh, in prison regarding, what, a Vanity Fair with uh, from uh, Caitlyn Jenner? With Caitlyn Jenner on the cover? Yeah, so... Chelsea Manning is now, let, let's sort of explain why this is important, not just, you know, like somebody's in prison and they had a magazine. So Private Manning was a whistleblower, wound up uh, giving a lot of information to WikiLeaks back in 2010. Before going to WikiLeaks, Private Manning went to the New York Times, the Washington Post, and I, I think like Reuters and said, I have a bunch of information on possible U.S. war crimes. Do you want the information? And they all said, get lost, kid. And so then Private Manning, through Tor Chat and something, found somebody from WikiLeaks, sent a bunch of this information over. That information came out, went public, and... Well, now Private Manning has been in jail ever since and was sentenced to 35 years in prison. Yesterday, there was a incident at the... It's at 35 years in a military prison, and I wonder yes. whether that's worse or better, honestly. I just don't know. Well, based on this story, I would say much worse. Uh, yesterday, there was an incident that could possibly wind up putting Private Manning in solitary confinement for either the rest of the sentence or the rest of her life, whichever comes first. Because Private Manning has a lot of health issues. The last time she was in solitary confinement, there were serious health problems that happened because partly because of the gender identity thing and then other mental problems and like legit mental problems from solitary confinement. Like that happens. I believe Amnesty International has called it uh, uh, cruel and unusual punishment. Cruel and unusual punishment, torture. I um, have not been in solitary confinement. I did. I did go to confinement, is what we called it in the prison that I was at. But I had a roommate, and that stunk. Uh, you get out of. I mean, you, obviously, you don't get out at all. Uh, you know, I. I. They say there's exercise, but I never saw it, and I never saw anybody who saw it. Did they call it the shoe? No, they did not call it the shoe. It's not, uh, <laughs> that's a California thing, and that's a special, no. It's not. It's also a Connecticut thing. It's a special housing unit, and that's a different thing. It's not con- solitary. I thought it was security housing unit. Okay. Yeah. Um, it might be different in both places, or maybe I'm wrong. Mm. Who knows? It, but it, that is what, from what I've seen of the shoe, it's just it's it's a higher level of confinement than prison, but not exactly uh, what I would have called uh, con- confinement. Right. So yesterday in the military prison, one of the guards, who is labeled a specialist, 
claims that a private- specialist is just a corporal, right? I don't know. The article here just says specialist, yeah, that's in quotes, claims that Private Manning swept some food onto the floor in the dining area. This led to a charge of disorderly conduct. That now, violation. Who knows what the circumstances were? I mean, it could have just been some, some crumbs that he uh, she got out of the way right. or whatever. But um, any other... A prison a prison guard should have dealt with this, if they were going to deal with this at all, should have dealt with this in the fashion by, here's a broom. You'll be sweeping the dining hall. The like, entire dining that's hall. That's the way you do this. Yes. but When you're not an a-hole. But with that violation on the books, Manning was placed in administrative segregation and her room was searched. The people doing the search found a handful of magazines, including the issue of Cosmo. She had an interview published in. They also found political books, which is unsurprising since Private Manning is working on a degree in political science. They dubbed this prohibited property. Also found in the cell. So the college course that she was taking was prohibited property. Gotcha. The books. Yes. Uh, They also found a tube of anti-cavity anti-cavity toothpaste marked may keep in cell isn't all toothpaste anti-cavity no like no? most of it now they're gonna put on their like cavity protection but like <laughs> regular toothpaste like it's just like paste that you put on your tooth to clean it not necessarily to fight a cavity uh but it was labeled may keep in cell which upon further inspection They determined was a couple of months outdated. This led to a charge of misuse of medicine. Toothpaste is medicine, all right? Taken, well, it's got an expiration date, so therefore medicine. So does all food. Taken together, and you're not allowed to have food in your cell. That will get you placed in solitary confinement. Well, that's a lesser charge, though, I would think, is right. Food in the cell over misuse of medicine. Right. So taken together, the tube of toothpaste, the alleged food on the floor, and the magazines are enough to send Manning even further up the river, and officials are spurning calls to make hearings public open to the public because they have to have a hearing in front of a judge, and I'm using air quotes around that judge. It's basically a lieutenant corporal that will wind up deciding. What is a lieutenant corporal? Or lieutenant colonel. Okay. I, I don't know military ranks, Mark. All right. I just didn't know what you meant. L- lieutenant Colonel. The, the the person that heard the last case was a Lieutenant Colonel. Rear like, General. <laughs> no, that's something totally different. Uh, but they, you know, like they have to have Rear a Admiral. hearing to <laughs> decide how long Private Manning is going to wind up being in solitary confinement. And apparently the military wants to keep that hearing private and hush hush and don't let anybody in. But right now, Private Manning is in solitary confinement indefinitely, meaning that it could be the rest of her life, the rest of her prison sentence, whichever winds up coming first. The article here from Antiwar.com says Manning was already in solitary confinement for months pending the initial trial and saw deteriorating health during that time. As someone who leaked evidence of government abuse and has publicly been calling for reforms during her time in prison, there seems to be a concerted effort to cut Manning even further off from the public and give her health problems in the past solitary confinement period. It's no guarantee she'll even survive the 35-year sentence to keep calling for reforms throughout. Does it? It feels punitive just by reading the article. Um, yes, like it's it's so petty that what this is about sweeping some crumbs onto the f- uh, off of the table, um, and then you know, hey, looks like you've got some toothpaste here. Oh, and a magazine and a college course. You're gonna have to go to the the. the you're you're going to the kula. <laughs> I mean, it's you're going to the hole. This is what uh, this is what uh, stands for corrections these days. Um, this isn't corrections. This is. Petty bull crap. Yes, this is guards being mean to somebody because they can be. They're not American enough, or whatever the reason might be. I have no clue what the reason might be. Well, I I can speculate why the guards are right. working this way or operating this way. The, the The very first thing that you mentioned about this prison, it's a military prison. Yeah. Private Manning revealed information that the military possibly committed war crimes 
And I only include the word possibly because like no court has said, yes, these are actual war crimes. But if you read the definition of what a war crime is, war crimes were committed. So because you have snitched on us, we're going to take it out on you. So, yeah, the guards are looking for any chance they get to make Private Manning's life miserable. Yeah, I... I because they can. That's what it seems like. And these guys, I guarantee you, they're probably going to wind up getting a promotion. What do you think? Is this punitive? I mean, I, I don't know how we're going to know, but it certainly feels like it. 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. Our username is lrn.fm on Skype, 855-450-FREE, Free Talk Live. This message is for home intruders, the cowards who break into people's homes to steal their hard-earned property, criminals who shatter lives and rob people of their privacy and security. Listen very carefully. We're the home security experts at LiveWatch, and we're taking you down. Because we're letting everyone try our newest home security system for one full year in their home. To take advantage of this amazing offer, call now, 1-800-670-9259. LiveWatch has been helping protect homes for years, and we've learned the secrets that intruders like you don't want people to know. Criminals, it's time for you to be afraid, because every person who calls will be protected against cowards like you. To the criminals listening, we're taking you down. To those who want to help protect their homes, call the security experts to try the LiveWatch security system. There are no long-term contracts, and if you're not completely satisfied, you can cancel at any time. Try LiveWatch now by calling 1-800-670-9259. That's 1-800-670-9259. Mike Stennerson from Midas Resources. At no time in history have precious metals been more important, certainly not in my 22 years in the industry. The dollar has lost over 90% of its value in the last 60 years. No fiat currency has ever survived the government printing presses. Ours is not immune. The time is now to be proactive. 1-800-686-2237, extension 116. Anything tied to the dollar is at risk. CDs, annuities, 401ks, IRAs, stocks, bonds, you name it. So decide. Do you want to leave a legacy of wealth or debt for your family? The choice is yours. Call me at 1-800-686-2237, extension 116. That's 1-800-686-2237, extension 116. Be proactive, not reactive. Call 1-800-686-2237, extension 116. Due to an upturn in the economy, Main Street Business Loans has pre-approved the release of millions of dollars in small business funding. Your business may already be pre-approved to receive up to $250,000. We've sent out millions of pre-approval letters. We see the economy growing, and our underwriters believe now is the time to invest in your business so you can grow faster and make more money. And we're prepared to give you up to $250,000 to do it. Your funds can be available in five days. There are no application fees, no annual fees, just quick access to up to $250,000. If your business did not receive your approval letter to get up to $250,000, call Main Street Business Loans Approval Desk now. 800-430-4505. 800-430-4505. 800-430-4505. That's 800-430-4505. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. 
To find out more, visit strategicshelters.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. You can call in and talk about whatever you want to talk about. Apparently, Chelsea Manning, in prison for whistleblowing on the United States government, is now being sent to confinement, a higher state of imprisonment, for sweeping crumbs um, off of the the table, uh, apparently, when uh, she was having a meal. And then having yes. tooth- toothpaste and a college course in uh, and a magazine room, and a magazine in her room, so it's yeah sounds- they, they did the search of the room after the crumbs were swept onto the floor that that was labeled disorderly conduct, and then they said all right we're now going to search your room because uh, we can, and they found a magazine that apparently Private Manning had been interviewed for. And was quoted in that also covered something about Caitlyn Jenner. They found some political books that, you know, one would expect someone trying to get a degree in political science to have. It sounds punitive to me. And and expired toothpaste. Yeah, um, it's... It's just too much. Um, if you've got uh, any thoughts on it, numbers 855-450-FREE. It's 855-450-3733. Um, apparently, the new Yes is Yes movement, which I think has been uh, very popular in New York and some liberal states, the idea is, is that uh, you need a higher level of consent for to have sex on a college Ugh. campus or something. Uh, that's been struck struck down, maybe? Well, maybe. At least it's certainly a, uh, in a solid direction to striking it down, which I think is fantastic because that whole uh, yes, is, yes movement is ridiculous. All right. And it's sexist. What is it? Uh, well, it's essentially this affirmative uh, consent, which is basically that it's basically requiring you, if you're going to have sex with someone, that you have to sign a contract first. Yeah, uh, I've I've saw a video where they were like consent is sexy. I believe is what the video is called. Right. And the idea was is that as uh, as as the uh, act progressed, you had to get um, consent, verbal consent for every sort of step. By the way, not I was just watching a- the video, and they the the people in that video did not get consent for every act that was. Uh, I think that the only way that this should be uh, fair or, or work is if the uh, the woman is the one required to get the signing of the contract. Why is that? Because if a guy does it, that dude's never getting laid ever again in the rest of his life. Period. That's just not happening. I see. But if the woman is the one who is respi- yeah. required to get the contract, no problem. Sign, he'll sign anything. That's the right. problem. It's, <laughs> pretty, it's going to be like a term, <laughs> terms of use contract on the internet. It's like, give me that. Here, yeah. I'm signing. Whatever. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, oh, I got to love you love you forever. I got to need you and forever leave you. Yeah. Uh, make you so happy for the rest of your life. There it is. I'll sign it. So, Mark, it's not just every step. Once you determine that you're going to go to coitus, it's every step leading up to. So, can I touch your hand? Yeah, that kind of can, thing. Can Ugh. I caress your hair? Can, can I nibble gently on your earlobe? Well, to get into the specifics of this case, uh, the a student who was wrongfully expelled for rape, he triumphs in court and due process beats the yes means yes movement. The University of Tennessee shifted the burden of proof and violated the rights of accused student Corey Mock. A judge overturned the expulsion of Corey Mock, a University of Tennessee at Chattanooga student and star wrestler, after determining that the UT's administration had improperly required mock to prove that he was innocent of sexually assaulting another student i don't know how you prove that but, yeah you can't um, prove a negative you know one of the things is, is that just because he's on the wrestling team i think that uh, people are gonna you know it just that whole jock thing the, the revenge of the mm-hmm. nerds just made every jock uh, guilty of whatever the crime is i don't know that that's necessarily true i think that there's still a lot of uh prejudice for athletes 
Not against. Yeah. Not against. Hey, hey, have you ever seen? <laughs> Probably both. Have you ever seen the movie? Uh, I, I, I'm forgetting the name of it now, but it's a football movie. Came out in the early nineties. No, not Friday Night Lights. Uh, Blue Mountain. L- just continue the story, and I'll just find name. the name. We'll of just it. get into naming every football movie. Okay, so. Uh, The decision is a significant blow to the concept of affirmative consent. According to Judge Carol McCoy, UT's, a woman, uh, a UT's, in case that needs to be pointed out, a UT's consent standard wrongfully shifted the burden of proof and violated Mock's due process rights. Mock's expulsion stemmed from a sexual encounter with fellow student Molly Morris during the spring of 2014. Morris and Mock had met online and quickly became friends. They hung out on several occasions and decided to attend a house party together. Morris had too much to drink. Someone might have slipped her something, though no evidence established this, and went to the bathroom to be sick. Mock found her, took her to a bedroom, and they had sex. A week after the incident, Morris told Mock that she had not given consent. Three months later, she formally accused him of raping her. The campus judicial process initially cleared Mock, but UT Chancellor Stephen Engel took an interest in the case after meeting with Morris. Engel asked the campus adjudicators to rehear the case. This time, Mock was found guilty. The rationale was atrocious. As Casey Johnson of Minding the Campus explains, Engel, for his part, argued that Mock had failed to prove that he had obtained affirmative consent. That is, that Mock, not UTC, had the burden of proof in the initial hearing. UTC hadn't adopted a yes-means-yes policy, but Engel inferred it through various provisions in the school's code and other writings. UT's decision was a powerful confirmation of due process advocates' worst fears about affirmative consent policies. I have long argued that the yes means yes when judged by university officials in tandem with a preponderance of the evidence standard creates a de facto assumption that an accused student is guilty unless he can prove otherwise, turning innocent until proven guilty on its head. Cons- you know, well, okay, so um, I, I see some... First off, it, this this sounds like a pretty awful case. Mm-hmm. Um, if you know, if, yeah. the, if the facts are as the facts are here, I mean, I as they're presented, let's call them facts because right. they're presented as they are. Um, you know, if some if she was slipped something, um, then I got a real problem with him going to the bathroom. Uh, you know, she's going to the bathroom to be sick. Oh right. yeah, you know what we should do? We should go to the b- bedroom and do it. Like that's th- this isn't the order of operations right. uh, for for the way these things should go. Um, however, if she drank too much, that's uh, you know, it, the thing is is that a girl shouldn't be precluded from going to a party if she can't control her alcohol consumption, right? Like, if well, she the other thing actually is- have control of it of whatever her substance consumption is. If she was slipped something, I think that. If she can prove, look, um, you know, like right afterwards, she goes, she gets tested. See, I was slipped right. something. The burden of proof should be on her, though. It should be. Right. I, I, I concur. The, gir- the burden of proof is always um, on the accuser. Right. But because here- we, we have this concept of innocent until proven guilty. At least in English common law, you don't have that in Louisiana because but they're there's- under Napoleonic common law, which is guilty until proven innocent. There's something else at work here, though. There's a meme that goes around the internet that talks about a guy who gets a girl drunk or they get drunk, and uh, so obviously she didn't give consent, so he raped her. Well, what Joseph- about him? If he's drunk, how can he give consent? 855-450-3733. It's 855-450 free, free talk live, lrn.fm on Skype. So I say to Mark at lunch, look, you know, I keep hearing from the government that, you know, they're worried someday ISIS may get here. And I go, duh, uh, Garland, Texas, Muhammad cartoon shooting, ISIS is already here. I'm not waiting for these people to defend me. If they don't know ISIS is here already, they got no clue, I'm taking care of myself. Guns80.com, AR-15 kits, 30-shot magazines, Great prices. They've even got the Hillary special. Guns80.com. That's 844-2-GUNS-80-GUNS80.COM. 
KDArmor.com is your one-stop shop for the most affordable body armor, period. With packages starting at $169.99 and free shipping on every order, KD offers soft armor and rifle threat rated armor up to level 4. Go to KDArmor.com and get your body armor today while you still can. Mention this ad and receive a free tactical scarf for a limited time with any body armor package. That's CATIArmor.com. Come and take it. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. So you've signed the Shire Society Declaration and are planning your move to New Hampshire to be around more liberty-oriented people. Next, sign up for the Shire Society Forum at forum.shiresociety.com. There are a bunch of people there who are already in the Shire, and they want to meet you. If you're already in the Shire physically, you should also come by the forums. Remember, not everyone uses Facebook. New people are signing up for the Shire Society Forum every month, so drop in and say hello at forum.shiresociety.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. The number is 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. You can call in, talk about whatever's on your mind. We're talking about this, uh, what appears to be a rape case, and I guess it's uh, been, you know, the university punished this athlete for what sounds like inappropriate sexual behavior to me, Um but the courts overturned it because the burden of proof wasn't met. Is that about right, Johnson? Sounds about right. Yeah. Let me real quick, I want to tell you about uh, the way that you can go about getting a tremendous discount on everything that you buy in your life. Um, pretty much Amazon. Uh, can we establish that Amazon has pretty much everything that you need to buy in your life? Obviously, you're going to have still have your cell phone bills and things like that, although you might be able to do a track phone through Amazon. I'm not entirely sure. And... Uh, they they more... don't have fresh produce, but they do have meat and seafood, and I just bought a case of turkey jerky Everyth on Amazon. Everything but um, essentially produce, 
and the bills you've got to pay. You can get at a discount of 15 to 25 percent, and people have gotten higher. Daryl, what's your highest? 30 percent on that case of turkey jerky. 30 percent off. I bet you could find farmers, local farmers, willing to trade with you for things from Amazon for your fresh produce. It's probably true if that's what you wanted to do. You might even be able to get an additional further discount. It's it's it, that's like <laughs> extra work though. Um, you know, in that case, this isn't much extra work to save fifteen to twenty five percent. And the reason I use tw- fifteen to twenty five percent is is that that's a more reasonable range of what you're going to save. But that's like getting a raise. If your boss said to you, "Hey, I'd like to give you a raise of ten percent," you'd be like, "Yeah." That's a big deal. Well, it's it's a big deal to be able to save this kind of money. That's okay, it. but let me be a naysayer here, Mark. Ahead, so what if ahead. you what if you're gonna buy you're gonna buy bitcoins because you got to change your FRNs because you're probably not getting your paycheck in bitcoins unless you're extremely fortunate, you know. So you're probably gonna be tra- exchanging your FRNs into uh, bitcoin. So how much does that cost you? Expresscoin.com. Um, you can do it for about three percent. You c- if you do less than forty dollars worth. Um, so say you did forty dollars wor- worth every week. If you do forty dollars worth or less, you do it for zero fee. Anything above that is three percent. That's the lowest fee you're going to find on transferring Bitcoin anywhere. So when you say fifty, did you say fifteen to twenty five or fifteen to twenty percent? Uh, fifteen to twenty five. So fifteen to twenty five. So realistically, what you're actually talking about is a seventeen to twenty two percent discount. So it's not worth my time. <laughs> <laughs> it's twelve twelve to uh, twenty two. Yeah. yeah, it's it is absolutely worth your time. <laughs> purse.freetalklive.com. You go there, you make an account, you fund that account with Bitcoin, you get your Bitcoins at expresscoin.com. Um, you go there to get your Bitcoins, and then you will have you will begin reaping the savings. Bitcoin is now worth getting for you that have been like, oh, you know, what do I need Bitcoin for? Because you can save a tremendous amount of money on the things that you buy day to day through purse.freetalklive.com. I want to ask from the opposite direction, though, here. So, because we've to, oh, every time we sell purse, it's from the the perspective of somebody who wants to buy things, mm-hmm. right, with Bitcoin, right? Well, what if you want to sell things? Like, it doesn't, like, it seems like if you're offering that huge of a discount that it's like, well, this seems like an extremely poor way of getting Bitcoin. I think that the people that are getting Bitcoin through using purse generally um they have amazon credits for whatever reason they have them some people are paid in amazon credits um you know people stephanie murphy world. for example uh former free talk live co-host has said that sometimes she'll get paid in like an amazon uk gift card okay they will not ship anything to the u.s on that amazon uk gift card it can only be used for amazon uk so she will find things that somebody in the UK wants to buy, and then she'll buy Bitcoin with her Amazon gift card. Interesting. And then you've got people in some of these, uh, a lot of time, you know, foreign countries where they might not have easy access to buying Bitcoin. They want to get some Bitcoin. Okay, I can go to Purse and you know like exchange rates and whatever else it winds up for some reason being beneficial to them to do it the way they do okay i mean i just i I happen to be in a position to know some folks who sell on amazon a lot of stuff and i'm trying to figure out i'm like well how does this make sense for sellers well that makes it make a lot more sense for me there you go so it's purse.freetalklive.com and and expresscoin.com to get uh, to get the bitcoins we were talking uh, about this, uh, this situation, as I said, this uh, college rape case. And um, go on, Johnson, with the, the facts of the case. Sure. Well, we were talking about the fact that this whole yes means yes thing and, and judging by that standard uh, creates a de facto assumption that a, the accused student is guilty unless uh, they can prove otherwise, turning innocent until proven guilty on its head. Right. So that becomes a, a big, huge problem. I mean, consider what evidence Mock would have had to present at his hearing in order to clear himself. Only a signed document or perhaps a video of the encounter could have definitively established that he had Morris's permission to proceed. So do college administrators really expect students to draw up consent papers or film every sexual encounter on, you know, to tape it? And sadly, think- some activists actually do this. Yeah, they do. Um, there, there's no doubt about it. And it's, you know, it's a safer way to go about things, but uh, it's, it, you know, you're going to have, uh, it's going to, Cut down your possibilities of having sexual relations if uh, you have to get a contract every time. It's kind of not romantic. Um, but you know, imagine, imagine this is actually a great excuse, guys. If uh, you're in college, you know, you just say, "I have to film this." 
in order to prove consent. So we have to film the entire <laughs> encounter. Film, it's yeah. uh, required by law. Good for everybody. Yeah, just make, <laughs> so, just make the law up as you go. Everybody else does. So he, here's my question on this. Can you get a blanket contract that says you have my permission any day between these hours to do anything that you want or does it have to be for each encounter? Each time, like... Sign, sign this paper be... saying that you can touch my left breast. Sign this paper saying that you can nibble on my right earlobe. Or could it be like, you know, we're in a relationship and we agree to have, you know, sexy time. Well, I can tell you that a lot of people th that just don't want that. There are people out there that just don't want people to have sex, period. There right. was a story out of, and I can't remember where it was, mi the Midwest someplace, the the West, it, I don't know, like the, the Great Plains states. Somewhere in there is what um, it comes to mind is, is this, uh, he was actually like a legislator whose wife was um, in the nursing home because she had Alzheimer's, but she'd want to have sex. Well, she was under the care, for whatever reason, of her daughter, and her daughter like issued a mandate of some sort that uh. her uh, mother and stepfather couldn't have sex. So he'd have sex with his wife, and he would be, you know, he, he got brought up on charges for this because I, I, I mean, it seems to me power of attorney. Uh. It, it seems to me that when you get married to somebody. That at that point, the assumption is that if you're having sex, that it is um, that that it that the assumption should be that if you're having sex, that it is not rape. But there are many people that want to, you know, just want this to. It's essentially uh, penis and vagina sex is rape. Well, in that case, and actually, there's a lot of legal uh, precedent for this. So um, there are conjugal obligations. <laughs> In a marriage contract. So I wonder if the daughter is issuing that as power of attorney, would the stepfather slash husband have legal recourse to sue her for breach of contract? I think they actually would have a case there. Well, he got weirdly. found not guilty on it, but Very um, weirdly. it's it's not only. But I'm saying not only should he not be found guilty, but because she issued that as a decree, that's a breach of contract, a marriage contract, and therefore, you know, because those basically, if you're married, sex becomes in in many states an obligation. It's actually like you. There are certain amounts of. Uh, I wonder what the amount is. Performative duties that are required by law. <laughs> And, and under marriage. Is it, is it once a week? I don't know. I don't think there's, there's nothing really established, but I think basically if uh, one uh, partner in a marriage decides to start withholding sex, that becomes grounds for divorce and possibly grounds for more in a it divorce like, case. Yeah, it sounds like it is absolutely uh, grounds for divorce, but I think would think not much else. It's um, actually, it, it often actually becomes grounds for a lot more because divorce cases become, uh, you know, uh, contested over property and shared belongings and yeah, all that other stuff. You know. 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. I can see some problems with this yes means yes uh, line of thinking, but this case, it doesn't make me feel comfortable either. 855-450-FREE, Free Talk Live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. 
Affordable health insurance was the promise of Obamacare, but for many, the government mandate caused more problems than it solved. And I want to tell you about a truly affordable alternative, Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare bypasses doctor and hospital panels, giving you the freedom to choose. 100% coverage up to $1 million per year per occurrence, who includes dental, vision, pharmacy, and holistic care. Call 1-800-714-6993. 1-800-714-6993. 1-800-714-6993 today. Are you excited about the World Wide Web? Do you want a place where you can share your ideas and express yourself? Well, dial up your modems and stream on down to the GCN Live Community Forum. Lots of radical features await you there. Wow, Internet guy. I am so glad I went to the GCN Live Community Forum. You too can discover why the World Wide Web is awesome. Just go to GCNlive.com slash forum. That's GCNlive.com slash forum. I'll see you in cyberspace. Space. Friend at GCN Live on Diaspora and Cross.tv. Keenvention is coming up October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. Explore Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel from 2013 on. This year, Activist of the Year Daryl W. Perry and Chris Cantwell will be keynoting. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or pay with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hallow Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more speaker announcements or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Keenvention.info. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. If you want to play online poker with Bitcoin, you need a site that's trustworthy and technically sound. The site managers of SWCPoker.eu have proven their commitment to bringing you great gameplay from a site you can trust, SWCPoker.eu. They have lots of new games too, including Chinese poker, and their Krill leaderboard is open right now. It's a beautiful site, easy to use with lots of players. Go on over to SWCPoker.eu now and have some fun with your Bitcoin, SWCPoker.eu. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. You can call in and talk about whatever's on your mind. It's Mark with you. Daryl. And Johnson. 855-450-3733. Did you know you can get archives of Free Talk Live going back for- What? Yeah, for, for many, many, many years for free. The other talk show hosts out there, they're charging you for your for their archives. Free Talk Live's giving them away. And we've got them going back farther um, because- Free Talk Live has been saving our shows on MP3, I th- I think, longer than m- the vast majority of shows out there. I don't think they were even thinking about has it. Has he never put up the first seasons yet, or is he still I like, I has. don't, okay. I was yeah. like wondering, is, like, is he still, I thought that they were like amp only for a while or something, I don't, you know. There was some kind of relationship like that, and I think he just put them up. Okay. Ultimately, that's what we want to do is we want people to hear the show. Right. So even, you know, if it's, even if it's Even when shows, it was completely different. It was completely different, Yeah. <laughs> Free Talk Live's changed throughout the years. We've been around for 12 years. Let's go to Ron calling in from Raleigh. Hey, Ron, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hello? Hey. Hello. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Uh, I'm calling in from Raleigh. I was talking about, uh, you were listening to you talk about Private Manning. Yes. And uh, I apologize if I sound a little nervous. I don't call in to talk shows very often. Okay. Uh, this is the first time I've heard your show, so. But I can't let your assertion go on uh, Private Manning and your characterization of him. What's the assertion? Well, you're you're making more like he's 
her. Somewhat of a hero or more than what he is. She. I know from very personal knowledge that he is just self-centered and egotistical. He well, should have never been deployed to Iraq. He was a security risk before he went. He assaulted a female at Fort Drum while he was there. But he's no great person to be spoken fondly of. He has issues, no doubt about it. Well, he should be charged for just, assaulting somebody if he assaulted somebody. And, well, um, he shouldn't have never gone. Well, but I, he was that's the government who did Nobody it. should be ever sent to any war zone ever. <laughs> Nobody. Then why didn't you call and complain to Congress when they're voting on this? Going to Iraq like I did. Well, I didn't okay, think. Once you commit to go, you commit to go. Yeah. Okay, my son and for daughter both went to Iraq, and for the information that he released, could have very well jeopardized our soldiers. And I Not one soldier was put in jeopardy, of course, as I understand it. Because, the U.S. government yeah, well, even admitted that none of the information that was released actually put anybody in danger, uh, except for Hillary Clinton. Every, yeah, everything's not always what it seems, just yeah. like you're trying to portray him as being some hero. He's you're a not. whistleblower. I have some news. Uh, we've been complaining about this stuff. We've we've been complaining, complaining about this stuff for over a decade, and they just don't seem to care. I don't, I don't quite understand why they just don't want to listen to us about this not going to war thing. Uh, well, listen. That's a whole nother topic there. <laughs> we're talking about Private Manning right now. And he didn't gather that information to release it in some alt- altruistic motive to, to expose some wrongdoing someplace. He did for his own personal gain. He what gain? How do you know this? What's the gain? That's why he had those magazines in the... What's the, the gain? Him, because he was trying to glorify himself. Oh, self-aggrandizement. Okay. okay. He, has, he has issues, okay? I, whether or not he should be sent for 35 years, that's a whole different thing. Yeah. But he definitely has issues. I, mean, I think we all do. Um, yeah. It's difficult to, you know, yeah, it would be. but we don't jeopardize other people's lives. You know, I, I just can't go for that. Glorify yourself. I think I can't go for that because the problem is, is in a democracy, and you know, we elect people democratically, even if we're not a democracy. Um, the idea is, is that we, the people, are the government, and that we have to be able to make decisions on who's a good leader and who's not a good leader. And because oh, agree, of because of Bradley now uh, Chelsea Manning's uh, information leak, we know that um, Hillary Clinton, in the form of the State Department, uh, broke the law. Uh, that was some information that was leaked in the uh, the WikiLeaks, and I need to know that as a voter. So that, well, by definition, know, I'm, not against, I'm not against more information being not classified and like that. But we should work on doing that through. The right process. When you give, hold on. When you give government politicians and bureaucrats the ability to make things secret, they're going to make things secret, and there needs to be some kind of pressure on that. It's not going to be electoral. That's right. And the press needs to do its job better and be more. How's the press going to be able to get information like what Brad, what uh, Chelsea Manning released? But he just bulk released it to the world. Yep, sure did. He didn't try to. Uh, pick out stuff that you know he knew wouldn't be. A, That's what a the risk press failed else. in doing. The press he tried to release to press organizations. The press organizations turned down the information, and um, so therefore, no, he didn't. What's I, that? I know from very close personal knowledge that he did not try to do. Well, all I can that. only work with the news stories, oh. and I'm sorry. That's that's the information I have, Ron. I can only work with news stories. Oh. Yeah, and even well, in the statement that Private Manning made, some great guy. Okay, he's he's. From some of the stuff that he uh, ended up, the end result, there were things that were released that should have been released before that were classified that probably shouldn't have been classified, but that's not the way you do it. And you can jeopardize people's lives by doing that. And it was my son was over there, okay? And I can't, you can't just have one guy say, oh, well, this is wrong, I'm going to release it all. Because you don't know what damage it's going to do. At some point or another, one guy's got to take, take a stand, though. Um, and yeah, I feel like you don't do it like that. He well, could, maybe, he maybe gone not. Before a congressional hearing. What's that? He could have gone to a congressional well, hearing. Congress, Congress doesn't so want to they bury it. Do yeah. <laughs> uh, believe me, when somebody in the military co- complains to Congress, they listen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, when was the last time that a military individual um, took something to Congress and they made and they um, did something about uh, it? You got to follow some of the congressional records that's gone on. It's happened. I know nothing of this. I'd be very interested in Congress taking a stand because they seem like a bunch of uh, politicians that take payoffs, especially from the military-industrial well, complex. Yeah, there's, there's definitely certainly a problem there. There's no okay. doubt about that. Well, it's not that I disagree with you entirely, Ron, but uh, I do appreciate the call. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you. Now, I wonder how of- fast – I just wonder how fast these, you know, like uh, Iraqi and Afghanistan and Iran and, you know, Middle East soldiers who are against us – 
uh, how fast they are going to be able to react to, you know, news that comes out, like something like one of these leaks or whatnot. Like, are they really on top of this? Just like, oh, we're translating this, and uh, now we know, and all this is military information. Like, they're, I mean, is is that how it really works? I mean, are they able to just like instantly react to it? Because it seems like even with WikiLeaks that it takes native English speaking people. Uh, who uh, want to get news out of these things months and months and months to pour through this information. It's millions of pages. Yeah, millions of pages, like months and months to pour through it to find anything relevant regarding anything. And yet somehow these soldiers are supposed to be able to like use this to like react to current military strategic planning and put people's lives at risk. How? By the time that they've reacted to any of this information, it's irrelevant. I suppose that's true. Um, I have heard that there were, and this is, I think, the most relevant piece of information is sort of like translators and uh, Iraqis that were, uh, you know, sort of, I don't know how to describe them, on the side of the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, they they were sort of, a, th their information was put out there, and that would be very bad for them and their families. Okay. I would like to say that that's, again, another government failing. If um, if somebody from Iraq worked with the U.S. soldiers to um, you know to, to to help them, then the United States government should give that person and their family an opportunity to move to the United States. Yeah, you because think? otherwise you're a bunch of ingrates and you stink, <laughs> especially if their lives are in danger. So Chelsea Manning could very well have made those people's lives better by putting pressure on the United States to make it so that they could um, you know have an opportunity to move here. So this is it's it's like saying the United States government is a, a force of nature and it is. The people that work there are not responsible for their actions. However, Chelsea Manning is, and I refuse to say that. Everybody who works within the government and works without is responsible for their actions. There's nobody who's not responsible for their actions. So that means everybody who's working for the U.S. government, keeping the secrets from uh, you know citizens that they need to know, information, these kind of things. These people aren't patriots. They aren't good people. They're bad people. And it seems to me that, uh, that soldiers like Chelsea Manning took an oath, swore an oath on a Bible that they would protect the country against enemies and, uh, foreign and domestic. And that comes down to an individual soldier's mandate. And that individual soldier has to ask themselves every minute they're doing their job, Am I living up to my uh, oath? Am I protecting my friends and families and neighbors and countrymen from enemies, both foreign and domestic? And also, is this a lawful order that I'm being given? And that's something that a lot of times they're told, like, you don't get to decide what's lawful. You just do it. But uh, let, let's go back for a second to the people w that should go through the channels. Thomas Drake tried to go through the channels nobody from congress wanted to hear anything that he had to say this is the first nsa whistleblower so he became a whistleblower yep and this is one of the problems is is that you can see as a whistleblower you see what happens to the ones that come before yes and you don't know what else to do this is why i love the movie pentagon wars with kelsey Grammer. It's sort of about like whistleblowing over the uh, the Sherman. I think it's a Sherman. Tank. No, the, the the Bradley Bradley, Bradley, Bradley fighting vehicle. Bradley fighting. Yeah, vehicle. that was an incredible piece of uh, <laughs> hilarious uh, of film. Eight fifty five four fifty three. Do you agree with Chelsea Manning's actions? Disagree? Tell me why. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the nsa stop searching with easy dns you found a keeper easy dns does it all domain names web hosting and managed wordpress hosting easy dns stands up for your internet freedom and with servers in canada they do not cooperate with the nsa go to easydns.com you'll love their services or get a full refund they guarantee it and they accept bitcoin that's easydns.com Geico applauds your inner road name. A slow clap goes out to your biker alter ego. You might be mild-mannered Michael in the office, the guy known for raising his hand in meetings, but out on the open road, it's Motor Mike. Geico supports you and your bike, Motor Mike, because beyond cars, Geico insures motorcycles, those glorious vroom vroom machines. With 24-7 customer service and great rates, the only thing you'll be raising from now on is a heck of a good time. So head out on the highway and make that road yours, Mike. Make it yours. Geico Motorcycle. See how much you could save. 
This is your Robertson Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Thursday, gold is down $8.40 at $1,116 per ounce. Silver is even at $15.48 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $265 US dollars. Check out our Twitter feed at Full Metal Liberty for twice daily metals quotes and updated market information. Or give us a call at 800-874-9760. Visit our online store at rrbi.co. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, August 13th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.42 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,123 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $268. Antiwar.com reports U.S. drones have killed at least five people Wednesday, attacking a vehicle in the southeast Yemeni port city of Mukalla. The city is held by al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, and officials labeled the slain as suspected al-Qaeda militants. As usual, there was no evidence that the slain in Mukalla were actually al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula fighters. The U.S. launches signature strikes on anyone who looks like they might conceivably be in al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, and in a town run by al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, the bar for that is set pretty low, with regular strikes on anonymous targets. Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula seized Mukalla early in the Saudi war in Yemen, taking advantage of the transition of Houthi forces to resist Saudi strikes and offensives by their allies on the ground. Since then, the Houthis have been unable to get troops into the area for a counterattack, and the Saudis appear completely disinterested in the city. Early this year, the U.S. withdrew the ground troops from Yemen, that it used as spotters for the drone war there. Despite this, the drone attacks have continued apace, and the question of who is actually being hit appears to have largely gone unasked, with the all-purpose label suspects good enough for most. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports the U.S. Department of Justice announced Wednesday it is opening a civil rights investigation into the death of Zachary Hammond, an unarmed South Carolina teenager who was shot to death by police last month while on a first date. 19-year-old Hammond was shot twice July 26 by police in Seneca, South Carolina in the parking lot of a fast food restaurant where he and his date went for ice cream. Authorities claim the teen attempted to run over Seneca police officer Lieutenant Mark Tiller. It has not been made clear however exactly why police converged on Hammond's vehicle in the first place as he was not the target of any criminal investigation or sting operation. According to the Seneca Police Department, Tiller shot Hammond through an open window because he believed the teen was operating his vehicle in a threatening manner. Local authorities have been investigating the shooting, but the FBI, U.S. Attorney for South Carolina, and Justice Department Civil Rights Division got involved on Wednesday. Hammond's family is calling on police to release dashboard camera video Video from the attending patrol cars, hoping the footage will shed more light on the sequence of events. Hammond's mother, Angie, said, We just want answers. We have no clue as to what happened. Hammond's father, Paul, added, Our son deserves that, and we deserve that as a family. 
When her plush and comfy life suddenly and unexpectedly fell apart, Brooke and her dog Cloud set out to defy the odds. If this is a man's world, as they say, living on the streets is no place for a young woman. One day, she awoke in the Redwood Forest and realized she had become a hobo and would ultimately come to know exactly what it means to survive. How to Be a Hobo by Brooke Willett is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. Reuters reports Ohio voters will decide in November whether to legalize cannabis for treating illnesses and for getting high recreationally. Secretary of State John Husted said on Wednesday he had certified the group Responsible Ohio had gathered enough valid signatures to place a constitutional amendment before voters in November. The proposed amendment's language still needs approval by the Ohio Ballot Board. The measure would establish a marijuana control commission charged with regulating the growth, sell, and taxation of cannabis, similar to legalization plans approved by voters in four other U.S. states. In November of last year, Oregon and Alaska approved the use of cannabis for recreational purposes in state-regulated systems that will usher in retail cannabis shops similar to those already operating in Washington State and Colorado. Voters in the District of Columbia also voted to allow recreational use of cannabis, but not retail shops. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Now that multiple Thomas E. Dewey High School sources have confirmed that junior Jessica Milley will soon begin putting out, with many speculating that she'll go all the way with her boyfriend Josh Gibson as early as this Friday, Millie's classmates have been quick to weigh in on the news. Jessica was sitting at this table when she told Erica that she was finally going to do Josh. Jessica's pretty hot, so I'm happy with her decision. I was pretty certain the next girl to start putting out would be Amy Courtley because everybody knows her mom's a slut. While the majority of students were somewhat surprised that Jessica might give it up at Andy Wheeler's house party this Friday, possibly on one of Wheeler's two basement couches, Millie's intentions didn't come as a shock to some. Now that the news is settling in, several Dewey High sources are suggesting that Millie's decision could cause a domino effect in which even more classmates begin putting out in the near future. I think I'm going to start putting out in January or February, definitely by prom. Keep checking TheOnion.com for more news as this story progresses. This is The Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live. It's Mark with you, Daryl, and Johnson. You know, it turns out a beloved childhood icon. I think that uh, I think Sesame Street has been around about as long as I have. It's changing owners. I mean, I didn't think this could happen. Not sort entirely, of. but yeah. Yeah. So um, Sesame it's changing Street. mediums. Well, Sesame Street is uh, put out by PBS, and they do are owned by a not-for-profit, like the Children's Television Workshop or something like that. Um, Sounds right. The Sesame Workshop. Okay. And uh, now they're going to be on HBO? That's correct. So explain explain to me what's going on. Here. So <laughs> does this mean that Sesame Street is now going to wind up being more adult-oriented? I don't know, but I, that would be a little weird. <laughs> So, I don't think so, though. No, they're not. Yeah. So, I like the, the beginning of this article here, the way the way it's written from the Daily News is, this report is brought to you today by the letters W, T, and F. <laughs> Sesame Street is heading to HBO, the long-running children's television show announced Thursday, and its usual hour-long episodes will be cut down to 30 minutes. The Sesame Workshop, the nonprofit behind the beloved series, reached a partnership with the leading cable news network, HBO, to stream the next five seasons, officials said. Our new partnership with HBO represents a true winning public-private partnership model, Sesame Work Sesame's Workshop CEO Jeffrey Dunn said in a statement. All right, hold on. So streaming generally means online. Yes. So is Sesame Street going to be part of the HBO Go thing, but yes. not necessarily broadcast on HBO? I think it'll be both. Okay. Um. So it says the it provides the Sesame Workshop with the critical funding it needs to be able to continue the production of Sesame Street and secure its nonprofit mission of helping kids grow smarter, stronger, and kinder. It turns out that Sesame Street is really expensive to produce, and sure. I didn't have any idea that was the case. 
mostly it's funded by its um, uh, basic underwriters. Uh, no, no. Sesame Street's funded by uh, merchandising. Um, uh, Oh yeah, yeah, and videos. But I wonder if they're going to have a requirement for this this to be broadcast for free because I mean if it's uh, or streamed for free because that was the whole point of you know Sesame Street before being able to be accessed by on public television by well, poor people. Yeah, hold on, <laughs> um, yeah, but Sesame Street. Okay, poor so. people don't have HBO. Sesame Street is owned by a not for profit, so there's no profit involved in it. But that not-for-profit gets money from PBS in order to for PBS to air that program. It's still going to be, but right. Yeah. But remember back during the 2012 election when Mitt Romney was saying something about you know like pulling funds for the corporation for public broadcasting and the whole thing of Mitt Romney wants to kill Big Bird. Well, of course that's uh, you know what people are going to say, but that's not. It, it's not true. Plus, right. I, pulling, I know it's not true. Pulling but, funding for uh, PBS could very well be the best thing that's ever happened to PBS. Yes, P- PBS doesn't make that much money from the government, and it's it's right. ridiculous. But like this whole thing, it seems as though like it's Big Bird killing Big Bird. I don't know that Big Bird's killing anything. This is a, this is Big Bird evolving into right, his but no, like the feathery form. The 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 point and Johnson, you were right on like the whole you know like we have to put this on free television because poor people, like that's the whole point behind the corporation for public broadcasting and PBS is to give educational television to poor people that can't afford cable. They're still going to get it. How about I want to do another episode with Katy Perry? You're not giving people HBO for free. <laughs> They're getting it on PBS. Hold on. The, what we don't understand, because we haven't had it given them the opportunity yet, is it's being sold to HBO, but HBO only gets a proprietary uh, first uh, shot at it for the first nine months. Then PBS gets to air it after that. Yes. So everybody's getting their free Elmo. Yeah. Episodes which were trimmed in half after officials receive positive station and viewer feedback to the shorter episodes will now be made available on PBS after a nine-month window, officials said. Sesame Workshop will produce a Sesame Street Muppet spinoff series and create a new educational series for children. The new episodes will begin airing as late as fall 2015. Over the past decade... Both the way in which children are consuming video and the economics of the children's television production business have changed dramatically, Joan Gans Cooney, the show's co-founder, said. In order to fund our nonprofit vision with a sustainable business model, Sesame Workshop must recognize these changes and adapt to the times. The decision to change the duration of the iconic series, which premiered in 1969, was jointly reached by PBS and Kids uh, sorry, jointly reached by PBS Kids and Sesame Workshop through research and consideration. PBS Kids spokeswoman Maria Vera told the Daily News. PB- now, yes, the the whole thing of like we we have to make it shorter because nobody has an attention span. Why not just make like two second videos, right? Like Vine, the, Vine is basically six second videos, and people love it because nobody has an attention span. Well, most YouTube videos, I think they try to shoot for something less than three minutes, right? I don't know. I don't even like to watch them if they're more than a minute, frankly. I think maybe younger kids. I mean, the, the whole point is to have it be at least some sort of educational lessons that are there, and I don't think that that's necessarily possible in that short of a format. I right, got the but- old school um, Sesame Streets on uh, DVD. My son loves them. You know, like the the whole thing, and I've noticed this on, you know, cartoons and a bunch of other stuff where, like, it just gets compressed down so far to where basically you're creating people to not have an attention span. Right. And then, we don't know why nobody has an attention span no more. Elmo doesn't know why anybody doesn't want to pay attention. (laughs) It's a pretty good (laughs) Elmo. (laughs) So, uh... PBS apparently tested out the half-hour episodes last December or last September on weekday afternoons, and the longer as the longer version aired in weekday mornings. Most fans of the fictional, famously furry cast were in favor of the whittled-down episodes. Vera said, following its debut in September, the half-hour format was well received by our viewers across on-air and digital platforms, so and by our member stations. an hour before that. Yes. Okay. We have worked closely with Sesame Workshop to monitor and its success since then and jointly decided to transition to the half-hour format this fall. The Emmy-winning show garners more than 6 million young viewers across the 100 across 150 countries each week, officials said. Now, that's interesting. I didn't know that uh, it aired in 150 countries. That's... I didn't realize it was 
so little. Like it, it seems like more than six million people would watch Sesame Street. I know. <laughs> there are more like the six million is like so low today in, in viewership. I mean, there are like oh, come on, really? Yeah, there are viewerships. Uh, there there are Twitch channels with kids watching video games that have more than six million views. Well, that's a view. No, 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 viewers like like live streaming. Huh. Yeah, just kids watching video games. I haven't even heard of Twitch. Yeah, well, that's sign of the times, man, for you. <laughs> Twitch is probably the most watched form of entertainment in existence today. Yeah, it's and th- there it was blows some, away every other network out there. Th- there was some pretty big company that recently bought Twitch, but I forget who it was. Ooh. Uh, it was like Amazon or Google or something. Hmm. Maybe Google, but I. I don't so, know. what does this mean for uh, me? Um, that uh, that that Sesame Street is now going to be owned by HBO. Not much. I mean, it's going to be you're going to get it online. Does Jack and, watch Sesame Street? Has he the, ever? Not the new ones. He watches the old old school ones. Right. Okay. And uh, so video. Then, yeah. Right. Okay. Has them on video. And so then nothing at all. <laughs> there's plenty of stuff on Amazon Prime as far as uh, you know children's educational stuff. He's he's really into the magic school bus right now, which is kind of science. Um, this is a, a school bus that does weird things. Anyway, <laughs> I recently made a, a, a magic school bus reference in, uh, uh, in relation to Daryl. <laughs> is it is magic school bus old? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's been around for a while. It's been around for a while. See, for me, it was it was Sesame Street. That was it for educational television. Yeah. The electric company, uh, there there yeah. was uh, come on, Square Re- wasn't one. reading a rainbow around at least, or was nope. that too late? Okay. It wasn't reading Rainbow. There was uh, Mr. Rogers, um, right. which was <laughs> more about sort of re- relationships than sort of learning as much, if that makes sense. Just how to be a good person. Yeah. And I, I used to live in Mr. Me, Rogers' neighborhood. Let me mean? show you my sweater. The the town where he grew Awful. up. <laughs> Latrobe, Pennsylvania. I so? lived there. I thought Mr. Rogers. I I loved Mr. Rogers. I thought he was. Uh, what was that creepy like, king guy on Mr. Rogers? What was his name? I don't know. The king of something. Oh, the the king of make the land of make believe. Okay. Eight fifty five four fifty free free talk live. I don't know. I really Have like you, that guy. He's creepy. Even Big Bird has to go capitalist. Free talk live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. It's time to build your own emergency food stockpile with the industry leader, My Patriot Supply. Once you try them, you'll know why so many Americans like you have made them part of their emergency preparedness plan. Experience the My Patriot Supply difference today with this unbelievable offer. Right now, a four-week food supply is only $99, and that includes free shipping. That's 50% off the online price. Call 800-274-3070 to claim yours. Limit two per caller while supplies last this offer isn't available online so you want to make sure and grab this opportunity to get prepared today 800-274-3070 to get your four-week food supply for the incredible price of only 99 dollars, and it'll be shipped to you completely free call 800-274-3070 right now that's 800-274-3070 to claim yours while supplies last don't wait call today Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. 
I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Yeah! Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. You can give us a call. Talk about whatever's on your mind. We've been all over the board this evening, including uh, the death penalty, uh, Chelsea Manning being sent to confinement. Uh, yes means yes. Now on the ropes as far as uh, uh, college campuses go. And I guess Sesame Street's been, been sold to HBO. Uh, Daryl, there is a town in Delaware that apparently is uh, filed for a bear cat. A bear cat is a... I Ballistic know. engineered armored response counterattack truck. It's an armored truck. Um, and it, uh, you know, they, these towns are getting them basically for free, government grant. But they have to sort of show cause. They, they have to fill out a grant application. And the grant application is supposed to give legitimate reasons why one needs one of these ballistic engineered armored response counterattack trucks. And one of the reasons given here in tiny little Keene, New Hampshire, from which we broadcast, was pumpkins. Um, and pumpkin also, fest. yeah, there, there's this event, uh, Pumpkin Fest, and they claim that somehow this uh, ballistic engineered armored response counterattack truck that holds maybe like 12 people could possibly used be used as an evacuation vehicle should terrorists floods. decide to nuke pumpkin fest for some weird unknown reason uh they also listed the charles demar marathon which is a qualifier for the boston marathon and that was basically it the, those were the reasons given in Keene, New Hampshire. Well, but one of the uh, situations uh, here, I believe, in Concord, when they were getting their bear cat, they also list, listed free staters. Free staters occupy New Hampshire and sovereign citizens. Now, all three of us are free staters. Yes. We uh, moved for the Free State Project here to New Hampshire. Uh, the idea is to get 20,000 liberty-loving individuals into one state. At this yes. point, more than 17,000 people have signed up. And you can join them by simply going to uh, freestateproject.org and signing up. And the idea is is that uh, once you can get, get 20,000 people to agree to move, that's when it kicks in. So you don't have to move until 20,000 other people say that they will, too. Five years after 20,000 people say right. they will. If so, I, like, you, you you've got to. probably seven years from today to wind up fulfilling your obligation once you sign, unless your intentions change. But it should be noted, speaking of Keen's Bearcat, that the only times it has actually been used are on 
calls for suicide or possible suicidal people. And I think once it got called for someone that allegedly had a hostage, but it turned out to be somebody accidentally locked a door. <laughs> so, like, it, it's never been used. Even the well, they use it in rides. parades all the time. No, they, they've not used it in parades. They park, they park they, it at events. They wheeled it out for Pumpkin Fest for a while. They, they had it near Pumpkin Fest. It was not actually being used during the pumpkin riots. Oh. So, like, they, they're not actually using this thing for any kind of thing. I that consider they're parading it around to be using it. I mean, not really, like, using okay, it. They, in they've a also done tactical, you know, like, fashion, tactical yeah. drills. Yeah. But other than that and taking it to go get gassed up. It's not being used for anything other than, like, suicidal people. But let, let's get into the thing here about the town in Delaware. The story comes from Mother Jones. And Mother Jones actually obtained more than 450 police department requests for armored tactical vehicles from the Pentagon. And they have a list where you can actually search and find all of them. And they write, one year ago this week, hundreds of camouflaged officers in Ferguson, Missouri, bore down on residents protesting the police shooting of a unarmed teenager, Michael Brown. Riot cops, their faces sometimes concealed by gas masks, fired off tear gas canisters, and as they stood on top of hulking mine-resistant vehicles, they appeared to train their assault rifles on the crowds. On some nights, they greeted demonstrators with a storm of or, yeah, a storm of rubber bullets. Images of this chaos provoked a furious debate over the billions of federal dollars that have helped local police forces amass combat-style weapons, trucks, and armor. Senator Claire McCaskill from Missouri echoed concerns from across the political spectrum, fumed that lawful, peaceful protesters did not deserve to be treated like enemy combatants. Law enforcement agencies responded by stoking old fears. No community, they argued, not even the smallest one is safe from the worst-case scenarios like mass shootings, hostage situations, or terrorist attacks. The use of this military equipment has resulted in substantial positive impact on public <laughs> safety and right. officer safety, according to the president of the Police Foundation, right. well, what it Jeb does is, Bierman. I don't care about Jeb. Um, the, the What this does is, is it uh, makes a chilling effect. It, it causes a chilling effect for protesters. If you see this big, scary truck out there, um, then, you know, well, I think I better get out of here before I get hurt. You know, yes. I, I've got a plan that I think, uh, Daryl, you're probably one of the few people I know who is, frankly, loony enough to try. Um, but I, I think it would be amusing if you could find one of these cities that hasn't yet uh, acquired a Bearcat and then go legally change your name to the city of whatever the city is, right? Get, you get a legal name change and then apply for a Bearcat as this name. <laughs> That's a good idea, Steve. You should do that. <laughs> Inside no, jokes, that's always works. So <laughs> the the uh, Lenco Corporation, which is who sells the Bearcats, they will not actually sell a Bearcat to anyone right. other than exactly. a government entity. Right. So but government entities often have uh, armored vehicles that they use that they trade in basically to get the Bearcat. And so you can get the old version that they're selling online oftentimes. Interesting. The story here from Mother Jones continues. It says, but in private, police justify these same programs in radically different ways. Mother Jones obtained more than 450 local requests filed over two years for what may be the most iconic piece of equipment in the debate over militarizing local police, the mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicle, or MRAP, and an analysis of these documents reveals that in justifying their request, very few sheriffs and police chiefs cite active shooters, hostage situations, or terrorism as police advocates do in public. Instead, the single most common reason agencies requested these mine-resistant vehicles was, take a guess? Um, citizens. Johnson? No idea. Drugs. Okay. To yeah. combat drugs. Fully a quarter of the 465 requests protected, or rather projected using the vehicle for drug enforcement. Almost half of all departments indicated that they sit within a region designated by the federal government as a high-intensity drug trafficking area. Nationwide, sure 
Nationwide, only 17% of counties are in high-intense drug trafficking areas. One out of six departments were prepared to use the vehicle to serve search or arrest warrants on individuals who had yet to be convicted of any crime. And more than a half of the departments indicated that they were willing to deploy armored vehicles in a broad range of special weapons and tactics raids, a.k.a. SWAT raids. Hey, you know, um, there's more. I, I, I know there's more. Um, I don't have a problem with the vehicle, people, the, the police having bulletproof vehicles, but I think they should paint them all pink. What do you think? 855-450-3733. That way they're not militarized. They're pink. 855-450-free. Free Talk Live. Are you excited about the World Wide Web? Do you want a place where you can share your ideas and express yourself? Well, dial up your modems and stream on down to the GCN Live Community Forum. Lots of radical features await you there. Wow, Internet guy. I am so glad I went to the GCN Live Community Forum. You too can discover why the World Wide Web is awesome. Just go to GCNlive.com slash forum. That's GCNlive.com slash forum. I'll see you in cyberspace. Space. Friend at GCN Live on Diaspora and Cross.tv. We, we, we are a survival company. We manufacture our own line of level 3 and level 3A body armor. We proudly make our armor 100% in America. We have the best prices in the nation, about $125 cheaper than our nearest competitor. All lab certified, for thou art my rock in my fortress, Psalm 31.3. We are Fortress Survival, LLC. Dot, dot, dot com. Our digital freedom is under attack. Look no further than Ross Ulbricht's life sentence to see that. After all, it's not Ross's freedom they're after. It's yours. It is bigger than Ross and bigger than a website. I think one website is by far less dangerous than the government trampling on our rule of law. The appeal is underway, and we've organized a grassroots fundraiser at thecryptoshow.com backslash free Ross. Up for grabs is... Cody Wilson's Ghost Gunner, A Week in Costa Rica, My Magic Mud, Ghost Outside the Machine t-shirt. These prizes are really great. There's a ton more. So go to thecryptoshow.com slash free Ross. Please tell all your friends. Share it up. Our grassroots tactics allow for 100% of all funds raised to go directly to freeross.org. So check out thecryptoshow.com backslash free Ross. And don't forget freeross.org. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website or idea email me mark at freetalklive.com here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising facebook twitter or google plus between the lol cats and the recipes the hot girls and the inspirational sunrise memes free talk lives post pass by your news feed like them comment it gives us more exposure if you don't see our posts click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Amid the catastrophic economic crisis spurred by Tuesday's release of This Christmas, the new holiday-themed album by John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John, economic experts told reporters today the Christmas CD has quickly plunged the nation into a double-dip recession. When investors learned that one-time screen couple John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John had reunited after 35 years for an album of timeless Christmas classics, investors had no choice but to pull money from markets immediately. We were already on shaky ground with the collapse of the U.S. subprime mortgage market and the reversal financial crisis in Europe, but consumer confidence plummeted after Americans saw the new album with a picture of Travolta and Olivia Newton-John holding cups of hot cocoa. We believe that when other countries find out the album features a Christmas song that pays tribute to summer nights, we could be looking at a global contagion. This is the blackest day on Wall Street in two decades. This is the Onion News Network. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free 
Free Talk Live. 855-450-3733. 855-450-FREE. Does all the militarization of the police bother you? Because it bothers a lot of people. And it bothers me, too. I think that police should be given uh, tools to do their job. I... Uh, and, and among them, I don't have a particular problem with uh, bulletproof vehicles. However, when you start giving them bulletproof vehicles and they're doing a job differently than um, other than what I think they should be doing, then they become a real problem. So I think this is about mission uh, creep. This is about uh, police being employed in the war on drugs. It has eviscerated the Fourth and Fifth Amendments, and it's less about armored vehicles. But the armored vehicles are kind of an interesting outward um, uh, projection projection of the problem with the police. Right. And, and these th- aren't local communities that are paying for this. This is the Department of Homeland Security that's giving them grants. And the Bearcat, that's the Ballistic Engineered Armored Response Counterattack Truck, has an add-on that you can actually wind up injecting uh, gas, like noxious gas, into yeah. someone's home through their door. A giant Why harpoon do you need that, that to protect against... They're saying here uh, drugs, like we, we might have to go uh, bust somebody for drugs. We might have to serve a search warrant. We might have to give someone a summons to court. We need to protect people from drugs by smashing through the walls of their house and spraying it with drugs. The uh, <laughs> Real quick, you can uh, get news on Free Talk Live. We have a, a weekly uh, email li- list update uh, thing that we do, plus uh, Facebook, Google+, Twitter. All that information is at news.freetalklive.com. Uh, you know, if, a police, if, if the police are going into a dangerous situation and they, for whatever reason, need to throw gas in a house, I'm not going to claim that they never need to throw gas in a house. Um, they have set houses on fire with those gas, uh, you know, canisters. Yes, in the past they burn people's houses to the ground and killed innocent people in the process. Yes, a an injector on the front of uh, this armored vehicle where nobody has to worry about getting shot while putting gas in the house might be a good idea. Yeah, it's always good to drive a vehicle into the side of someone's house. That's a good idea. Well, it has a it's, it's <laughs> this long pole thing that will do it, and it's mainly for wooden houses. It wouldn't really work on uh, a metal or on a, uh, a stone. Although wall. it'd be fun to watch them try. <laughs> they um, th- there's also a turret uh, for you know this yes. vehicle, and that's disturbing Wolverine! too. <laughs> that, that way you can throw the search warrant at the people as you drive by and you don't actually have to come in contact with them. The turret is not a turret like with a gun on it. It's a turret where a person <laughs> could be. with a gun yeah. is encamped. So yeah. it's basically like this... Uh, it's this blockade, uh, this metal barrier where somebody can sort of get a good, um, you know, set their gun up and be a very small target at the same time. Right. Yes. And I, look, I get why that might be, you know, why do armored trucks have little holes where you can stick a gun out of them? Um, it's because sometimes you might need to use a gun in those circumstances. Get a tripod with a little magnetic base. Just Again, I think that this comes down to. The war on drugs has eviscerated the Fourth and Fifth Amendments. Nobody would be having a problem with police officers being protected while they having the right equipment to protect themselves while they do their job if the police officers' jobs hadn't gotten to be such a threat to, the, to um, you know, just f- a free way of life. At this point, uh, uh, there's a book out there. It's written. It's called Three Felonies a Day. I don't know. If every American commits three felonies, the average American uh, commits three felonies a day, as the book sort of posits. But I can tell you, a lot of people who are listening to me right now are breaking the law and don't even know it. And if a police officer wants to arrest you, they can make up something. Yes. There's a problem with that. There's a big problem with that. No police officer should have that level of power. No individual should be given the level of power that they can just make something up and put you in a cage. They need to, they should have, you know, due process of law and all those sorts of things. And then at that point, if they need a vehicle to protect themselves from the bullets raining down upon them from some evil, maniacal mastermind who happens to be holed up in their home, fine and dandy, they should have that equipment. The problem is they they have made themselves the vic- the, the 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 villains in this in, in this scenario many americans think that the police are villains and that's a problem that's a problem of the police's making yeah so the article here continues it says by contrast and that's contrasting the 
25% uh, of applications that list drug enforcement, the 17% that say uh, delivering search warrants or arrest warrants. By contrast, only 8% mention the possibility of a barricaded gunman. For hostage situations, the number is 7%. For active shooters, 6 Only a handful of the 465 applications for armored vehicles, only a handful mentioned downed officers or the possibility of terrorism. Peter Kraska, professor at Eastern Kentucky University, says, quote, this is a great example of how police as an institution talk to each other privately versus how they talk to the public and journalists who might raise questions about what they're doing with this equipment. He did a study years ago about police militarization. When police are pressured in public, he says they're going to say, what about Columbine? Or point to all of these extremely rare circumstances. The request for these armored vehicles flowed to a massive Pentagon program known as the 1033 program that has given communities across the country a total of $5.6 billion in combat equipment left over from the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, and that includes 625 MRAPs. And I just want to point out, this is only talking about the 1033 program that runs through the Pentagon. The Bearcat that was received by the Keene Police Department. That's from Homeland Security. That's from Homeland Security through a grant from FEMA, which is not covered by this 1033 program. It's a completely different program. Yeah, so the, the police are getting lots of militarized equipment. And when you think about 50,000 uh, SWAT raids per year in this country, that's a lot of SWAT raids. And the problem is, is that... Uh, you know, I mean, many of them, if, if you just remove the fact that uh, if, if you forget about for a second that, uh, that this is a war on drugs issue and that most most SWAT raids are on people that are supplying something to the marketplace that other people are willing to pay for um, of, in highly inflated prices. But that's the war on drugs for you. Um, that's how, that's how prohibition works. If you remove that from the situation and you start realizing that everybody makes mistakes and these police are raiding the wrong houses they're killing people's children and their dogs and 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 citizens and by never accident. being held accountable for it right because of all of these different kinds of immunities that legislators have given them or the courts have given well, them who's responsible the person who planned it the person who was in charge of it the person who pulled the trigger the person who was uh you know went along with them I, yes, I would say all of them. Right. I mean, when you if the person driving a getaway um, on a bank robbery and somebody gets killed in the bank, the person driving the getaway car gets charged with murder. Yes. I, you know, I just ha I have an idea out there. You know, I hope that as the drug war ends, because I think it's it's got to be an eventuality at this point as all the polls are showing that it's definitely moving in that direction, at least from marijuana, for sure. Um, that someone could probably make a pretty nice business converting those uh, stupid things into uh, snow plows. Because, I mean, really, realistically, the cities are not going to be able to just get rid of these things. So there's got to be a use for them. So my use, I could guess, would be snow plow. I think that these are pretty expensive vehicles, and it. Uh, so are the the big commercial snow plows. The you know the big ones, the yeah, ones that like, push a lot job. of snow. They're made for that job. I don't think that uh, these things are made to push through them. They're tanks. I mean, maybe. you, you want to push a bunch of snow, use a tank. Maybe. Um, I mean, it, this isn't a pickup truck with the with the snow plow um, attached. No, to no, it. I'm talking like the big snow plows. You know, the ones that like oh, yeah, like the the big highway ones or whatever. You Those know? things are huge, and yeah, uh, maybe they could push it. Maybe they couldn't. I don't know. I think that they could. 855-450-3733. Are you disturbed by the militarization of the police? Do you have creative alternative uses for MRAPs? <laughs> <laughs> what, what color do you think they should paint their uh, MRAPs? 855-450-3733. Skin tone. 855-450 free. Rainbows. Put free the, free the nipple on the side. 855-450 free. Free Talk Live. Attention business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? 
The answer is I-N-C, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated in someone's who's your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. In recent years, we have witnessed the most catastrophic disasters in history. Earthquakes, hurricanes, tornadoes, typhoons, and more. Legacy Premium Food Storage will prepare you. Our great-tasting, non-GMO quality food products have a 25-year shelf life, are the most affordable on the market, and are American-made. They're perfect for hiking, camping, and road trips, too. Be prepared with the best. Go to SurvivalFoodAlliance.com. That's SurvivalFoodAlliance.com. Virtually anyone can hack your cell phone and track your calls, your texts, your emails, your every movement, but only if they can detect a signal. Stay one step ahead of hackers and Big Brother with a Block It Pocket, a custom-made pocket infused with pure silver that creates a complete Faraday enclosure for your cell phone. For free shipping to the lower 48, visit BlockItPocket.com or call 888-315-9618, BlockItPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 85% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. If you're a regular reader of FreeKeen.com, you know there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at FreeKeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at FreeKeen.com. That's FreeKeen.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855 450 free. The AMP program. What the AMP program allows you to do is to fund the spreading of the ideas of liberty. I would say that there are very few organizations. I'd be willing to go that uh, go so far as to say Free Talk Live is the most efficient use of uh, your sort of charitable liberty dollar. And by that, I mean that we, and, and you know, many of these think tanks and that sort of thing, people are getting paid huge paychecks. Not to say they're not worth it. They're doing great academic work and that kind of thing. Free Talk Live is bringing the message of liberty to people uh, who are listening to their talk radio stations, the same stations they're hearing Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity on. They're hearing Free Talk Live, and 
that is invaluable work, work that is not being done by any other organization or very few other organizations out there. And you can support us by going to amp.freetalklive.com. Your five bucks a month uh, entitles you to some great perks, including uh, what I think is the best one, um, is, is because I participate in a lot, is the amplifier-only uh, Facebook page and or por- group or whatever the hell it is. It's a know, group. Whatever it is. Um, anyway, you can post things there and we chit-chat and have a great old time. So you've kind of become the Free Talk Live board of directors by joining the AMP program because you participate in many of the decisions that we make for the you know the organization and that sort of thing. So amp.freetalklive.com, please go ahead and join up now. I know you've been thinking about doing it. You've been thinking it's a good idea. It's a good idea. Go ahead. Sign up now. Amp.freetalklive.com. So, uh, Mark, Daryl, I know you guys are Android users, both of you, right? Yes, I am. So, yes. I don't know. Have you ever heard of AirDrop? For Apple, I can handle a phone that has more than one button. Hold so, on, yes. airdrop. <laughs> Isn't that when like a military plane flies over and then they drop a bunch of supplies? And somewhere? that is exactly why this feature was named that way. Um, it is a feature, and I don't know if uh, Android has an equivalent, but it's a feature. Are local police getting those? Uh, what iPhones? No, uh, military airplanes too. I just, think like, that they actually have stuff. those really, really big planes. That's how they drop off the Bearcats. Is they just parachute them in. Um, <laughs> but uh, AirDrop, this feature on phones, uh, allows uh, users to instantly transfer files uh, from phone to phone by to other users who are within proximity. So, like, let's say one of you guys also had an iPhone and was in the room and you had AirDrop turned on. I could send you files directly from my phone to yours without needing Wi-Fi or any sort of connection. It would be very fast. It's so it's like Bluetooth. an NFC Bluetooth sort of thing? Yeah, exactly. So I'm wondering, does Android have any sort of similar feature where you can send files over NSA, NFC or Bluetooth? Or uh, There was something that I heard about. I think it's FireChat. Okay. Uh, I, I think that's the name of Fire it. FireChat's an app that allows people to do that. And that, that was interesting because FireChat was used a lot in Egypt yes. uh, during the thing. So, yeah, that's right. interesting. When, when uh, you know, governments are like, oh, there's protesters, so uh, telephone companies shut off all of your towers. Yeah. I don't think FireChat ever took off in the same way that AirDrop is available on every single iPhone. But maybe there's something or maybe they'll add something in the near future. But... The news here is that a woman may have been the first person ever to have become the victim of what police term as a new crime, cyber flashing. The cyber Brit- flashing. Cyber flashing. The British Transport Police are investigating after 34-year-old Lorraine Crichton Smith received two images of a stranger's penis on her iPhone as she sat on a train in London. I had AirDrop switched on because I had been using it previously to send photos to other another iPhone user. And a picture appeared on the screen of a man's penis, which I was quite shocked by, Miss Crichton Smith told <laughs> the BBC. She probably wondered how the heck it got there. Like, what? Like, bring? Whoa. She declined the image, but then received another similar picture, leading her to believe they were being sent by a person on the train. It's funny. I felt violated. It was a very unpleasant thing to have been forced upon my screen. What's the next stage from sending a naked photograph to a stranger? What happens next? Was he getting any sort of gratification from it? Airdrop is... Oh, my God. A pur- it, the period thoughts that must be going through this man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he played a joke on me, and he's thinking dirty thoughts at the same time. Yeah. Airdrop is a contact-sharing device on Apple iPhones, iPads, and Macs, and can be open to messages from anyone. Ms. Crichton-Smith said that she uses her first name on Airdrop, so the sender knew that he was sending his disgusting pictures to a woman. BTP Superintendent Gil Murray said that an incident involving AirDrop was new to the police, and they have brought in the cybercrime unit who will look into the case. She said it dealt with cases involving Bluetooth, but an incident via AirDrop was new to us. However, she pointed out that because Miss Crichton Smith did not accept the image, it was not saved onto her phone, so there will be very little evidence to work with. Okay, Re- so even if she did save the picture. What are they going to do? Get a search warrant for every man that lives in a hundred mile <laughs> radius? Can you show say, us your junk? You must show us a photo of your junk taken from this exact angle. <laughs> I imagine that uh, th- th- now cough twice. There's no gu- there's no guarantee that the uh, picture that this guy sent was his own uh, right. junk. I mean, <laughs> You know, I, I'm maybe I'm, he downloads pictures from Grinder and's like 
this is a funny looking one. Everybody should see it. And I wonder when the, the pranks from this are going to start becoming like cyber crimes. Like, you know, so you're sending your friends Goatsy and they're like, oh, I'm so offended. Right. <laughs> Goatsy is offensive, is. but yeah. I wouldn't propose that anybody go to jail for sending it. Lemon party. You yeah. Know? And kids don't go look at this. No, <laughs> no. Um, it's, it's bad, bad things. Don't the, Google any of these terms ever. <laughs> ever, <laughs> ever. Um, but I mean, you know, when you when you look at. When you when you think about a penis, the average penis, uh, by definition, half of all penises are below average in aesthetic value, right? So therefore, this guy may choose to um, choose to go find one that is aesthetically more. He's he's got a fifty fifty shots that his is not aesthetically hold on, pleasing. Hold on, you're, you're off on your math. Yeah, uh, half of them would be below the median, but not necessarily below the average. Explain that to me. Because you can have an average that is higher or lower than the median based on the sums that are compiled. Okay. All right. I guess you're right. They're, they're half or below the median, not below the average. But, yes. But, eh, you know, they are going to be below average because there are three billion of them. So we're not talking about a situation. And they're all generally similar looking. So they're, we're, it, it's going to be the same number anyway. The me, average Not necessarily. Median, I mean, think about it. If you have like, you know, 30 people that have an IQ of, of 100. One of them that looks like uh, Justin Bieber and that he's going to throw off, that, that penis is going to throw off the uh, the numbers. Is that what you're claiming? Sure. Is? Yeah, it would. I, I'm curious how you one. know what I Justin Bieber's <laughs> penis looks like. No, I said the penis looked like Justin Bieber, <laughs> which I guess is a good looking young man. Hold on. So are you calling a... Justin Bieber a penis? I'm not calling him anything. I'm just saying. That... I, I'm just confused about this Mark... analogy of whether you're talking about Justin Bieber. Webcam users are in for a treat to watch Mark turning a, or <laughs> a shade of red. you're talking about Justin you Bieber's can penis. Cam.freetalklive.com. <laughs> so, I, I, no, all I'm saying is, is this guy just as likely sent a picture that is not of, not of himself. That's my only claim. Like, he's probably got a little bitty willy. <laughs> and you know this because you're the person that sent the photo? No, I know this because he spends his time sending He sent the photo to you as well? Pictures to people on a train. He's not even productive enough to be <laughs> having something to do or a little video game to pass his time. Now, how do you know that this flasher is a size queen? Maybe he, you know, just uh, you know, it wants to be out there and uh, you know, show off what what he's got. Maybe he's got the biggest one in all of London and he thinks everybody should see it. Maybe so. He could be, you know, hideously deformed and still want to show it off. I suppose that's the case. Let's go to John calling in on Skype. We've John Thomas. Moments left, so Wait, I'm not going to John, this please off. save the show. Yeah, John, I've got my finger in the dump button. You do anything crazy, man. I'm, you're out of here. Oh, no, I will not do anything crazy. I was just going to talk to you about the uh, the MRAPs you guys were talking about. Oh, good. Thank you. I, yeah, <laughs> um, I was a cop, and I was uh, up until April this year, and... I was on the SWAT team for seven years, so I've I've been in one and been around them and and used them. So, so the the town that you lived in or the city that you lived in, what was the rationale given by the police department as far as why they needed this thing? Well, the rationale was number one, it was free, yeah. of course, you know, and uh, I mean, you know, it's like a two hundred fifty thousand dollar piece of equipment that was offered to us for free. Who doesn't take a free so, bulletproof truck? Exactly right. I wish I had my own. Um, but uh, would you accept the, uh, a pink one? A pink one, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think? The, the, what, what do you think the re reaction of the uh, the guys on the force would be, though, if they were forced was, to have their MRAP pink? If it was pink, I, we'd probably have to get in the paint shop eventually. <laughs> yeah, that'd be part of that'd be part of the contract. It had to stay pink. I like that. Well, I, they probably would have taken this still. Or guess. like the Onion article where they changed the police's uniforms to purple to go with the pink. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the main reason, I mean, ours was justified or rationale, as you said, we um, uh, it was it was it wasn't just used willy nilly. You know, we only used it if um, uh, we had you know the potential to barricade the subject and and the main thing is that way instead of us hunkering down behind trees and cars and hoping they'd stop a bullet, we could actually sit in front of the house and wait for him to come out. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? 
Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Tollhouse Morsels, helping you create special moments and memories your family will cherish forever. Visit us at Tollhouse.com. You may bake for birthdays and holidays, but why stop there? Sweeten up the rest of the year by designating monthly dessert days. Treat your family to one of their favorites or surprise them with something new. Either way, you'll create a tradition everyone will love. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. The live edition of Flaming Freedom is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, August 13th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.42 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,123 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $268. Antiwar.com reports U.S. drones have killed at least five people Wednesday, attacking a vehicle in the southeast Yemeni port city of Mukalla. The city is held by Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, and officials labeled the slain as suspected Al-Qaeda militants. As usual, there was no evidence that the slain in Mukalla were actually Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula fighters. The U.S. launches signature strikes on anyone who looks like they might conceivably be in Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, and in a town run by Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, the bar for that is set pretty low with regular strikes on anonymous targets. Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula seized Mukalla early in the Saudi war in Yemen, taking advantage of the transition of Houthi forces to resist Saudi strikes and offensives by their allies on the ground. Since then, the Houthis have been unable to get troops into the area for a counterattack, and the Saudis appear completely disinterested in the city. Early this year, the U.S. withdrew the ground troops from Yemen that it used as spotters for the drone war there. Despite this, the drone attacks have continued apace, and the question of who is actually being hit appears to have largely gone unasked, with the all-purpose label suspects good enough for most. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledge.